Whoa! Woo! The knockers are at it again. The usual, uh, yung SOP nila. They want to kill Fushi. But before that, Fushi has good reason to, has good reason not to trust Tonari. Ilang beses na rin siya dinugasan nito eh. Well, when it comes to information, Fushi has learned uh, one important thing. Distrust. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you guys why right now. With distrust, you get to um, you get to filter out who's the friend and who's the enemy. Okay? Important yan. It's okay not to trust people uh, from the get-go. Okay? Yun, uh, yun, yun ang lesson yun ang lesson na uh, natutunan ni Fushi rito. Now, ah! There was also another lesson he learned. Teamwork. So, ganito yan. Uh, yes, the knocker was out to kill him again. Pero, he was caught at a, um, at a, uh, at a really lax time kasi nakausap niya kasi yung yung, uh, yung huli, yung huli niya nakakalaban. Uh, well, hindi, hindi naman, well, natalo, tinalo niya through default. Dahil, Merong pumana sa kalaban niyang to. And then, well, he felt sorry. He felt sorry. So, pinuntahan niya and what? Kinumusta niya. Eh, natawa pa nga itong taong to eh. Natawa pa nga itong taong to sa kanya eh. And what? Well, eventually, that guy said thank you to him. He was thankful na Fushi spared his life. And mabuti na lang. This guy had a, had a brother who is, um call this who is dependent on him malit ma malit mang bata it was a good decision for Fushi to spare him kasi may ano eh may may taong pang may taong dumidepende pa sa, sa kanya back to the knockers the knockers were able to lay the first strike they were able to get Gugu okay nakuha nakuha nito si Gugu yung memory at least yung memories niya what Fushi now has um as forms, yan, uh, of course, the unknown boy, si Parona, uh, the crab, <laughs> yeah, he, he did, he did, uh, he did copy a crab, and of course, the mole, which, he was almost successful in using it against this knocker, uh, medyo pagtsatsagaan nga lang, nakapasok siya sa loob ng katawan, he was able to, he was able to bite off one, uh, one nerve of it, one of its nerves, and uh, na detect so. Ah, uh, tila boy sa palabas, inexpel siya. All of a sudden, um, the other um, what you call this? The other people in in Tonari's neighborhood helped out. Okay, tumulong sila, and wow, this gave Fushi uh, a real education on how well on how essential teamwork is. You're now down to just one capable and two nearly incapable forms. So yeah, you need all the help you can get to in taking out this knocker. In the end, let's uh, rephrase that ARD style. Final scene, they were able to take out this knocker. And in the process, Fushi gets back. March, Gugu, and Oniguma, yung giant bear. In the episode where Gugu died, dalawang forms nga pa rin nakuha niyan. It's si March at saka si Uniguma. So, um, two forms pala yun. This is a huge win for Fushi. Now, they were celebrating. Pero, I think, for, I think he forgot to destroy the core. No? For those, for, for those of you who have, see, who have seen the episode, para nakalimutan na niya sirain yung core eh. Okay? It's essential. You have to destroy the core para para hindi na makaulit ang 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 knocker na to. Just like what he did when he first used March against it. Overall, it's a fucking good episode again from this anime. What a way to um to cap off the first 15 episodes of this anime. Because well, next week the road to the road to the finale of To Your Eternity will start. Magandang send off ito. Now, pace. The pace is uh, what you call this. 
moderate but good enough. The slow moments here involved um basically Fushi's trust issues with Tonari. I would not call that tense moments because Fushi was on the defensive. And that's reassuring. And through the pacing of this episode, we would not realize that Fushi learned two valuable lessons in humanity. Okay? It's okay to have trust issues and teamwork makes the dream work. Whoa. His dream in this episode is to take out that knocker and take back whatever forms it has stolen from him. Ayun nga, si March, si Gugu, at si Oniguma. Tatlo yun. His strongest form is Oniguma, yung giant bear. So, yeah, pati yun, nabawin niya. This is, for, for me, okay, at least, this is a huge win for Fushi against the Knockers. So, basically, the Knockers are back to square one. And the pacing of this episode made me realize that, mga ka-lifestyle. Moderate, pero... Good enough on pacing. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift was, um, didn't come until mid episode. Nung dinalo niya, yung, tina, yung huling dinalo niya. Okay. He was already, he was already in the semifinals and he was using Parona. Okay. So, uh, dinalo niya ito. And, well, if it weren't for that, that, uh, that, what's called this, that visit he made. We wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't find out that meron palang umaasang kapatid ito na maliit na bata. Maliit na bata. And, um, we wouldn't realize as the viewer that Tonari isn't, isn't to be trusted yet. Okay? Kasi, sabi niya, mag-iimbestiga siya. Eh, ang nakuha lang niyang information, yung yung dietary status ng captain ng ship na na nagdala kila, kila Fushi at Pioran. That's why I called it a gear ship. Because I think Fushi should not tonary trust that much. Okay? From here on end. He should always have trust issues with this girl. May, eh, parang may basic interest ng babaeng to eh. Pwede siyang gamitin, pwede siyang gamitin ito. Pwede siyang, uh, yeah, pwede siyang samantalagin. Okay. Oh. She was the one that signed Fushi onto this tournament in the first place. Final gear shift is when what Fushi and uh, some of the inhabitants of this island were able to beat this knocker. They found a way to um to rip through that stone armor of it. Yung kasi yung ginagamit na form dito ng knocker yung kay, Onig, yung, yung kay Oniguma the giant bear okay eh encased in stone pa so Fushi had to turn to had to turn into Parona just to use a bow and arrow kasi we all know Parona is an accomplished warrior okay adept siya every fighting technique kaya kahit hand to hand combat puta kaya kaya Accomplished martial artist din si Parona. So, with Parona's, um, what you call this? With Parona's experience with the bow and arrow, yun ang ginamit niya. Meron siyang ginamit na arrow na may, na ang dulo ay eh, isang stick ng dynamite. Pinalusod yun doon sa isang butas ng knocker. Po! Sumabog sa loob. Everyone else followed Fushi's lead. Hmm. Pinag, pinagtitaray yung, pinagtitaray yung knocker ng ano, ng ng arrows na may dynamite and they had an endless supply dahil nagaya ni Fushi yung make ng arrow <laughs> so all he has to do is make copies of make make a humongous amount of copies of that mm, from his hand lumalabas na sa kamay niya they eventually took out this knocker again this was a huge gear ship in the anime because what Fushi realized that, well, as the saying goes, again, teamwork makes the dream work. Bonus gear shift. Fushi was able to find Pioran. And, uh, well, nakakulong nga. Pero, sinabi niya kay Fushi na she's back to where she's supposed to be. Kasi, 
Wag na confirm naman mismo ni Fushi na talagang krimin wanted criminal pala si Pioran. Okay? Wanted criminal talaga siya. So she's been in and out of prison all these years. And probably yeah, Fushi saw the good in her and she returned it back by um teaching Fushi uh, uh, how to write on how to talk and even how to um even how to deal with some people. Okay, ito, ito yung ganito niya isinukli ang kabaitan ni Fushi. It feels good that um to know that Pioran is still alive and there's a good chance that Fushi can rescue her. I just gave you a bonus gear ship, guys. I could not count this as an official gear ship at first kasi I was expecting it that Fushi will be able to find Pioran. He is an alien. Okay? Iba yung iba yung mindset niya kasi when it comes to tracking tracking people. I'm, I'm just I'm just making a speculation here, all right? <laughs> so, hindi ko makount yung uh, pagkikita nila ni Pioran as an official gear ship because eh, eventually kasi inexpect ko na yun eh inexpect ko na talaga na uh, that Fushi will be able to find Pioran kasi isla lang naman yun eh how big how big is that how big that how big can that island be plot wise malinis although there were there were flashback moments pero those were just that flashbacks so non factor sila sa sa magiging uh, critique ko sa plot right malinis pa rin ang plot because it we're still in that same continuity of um of fushi still in this tournament we're still in that uh we're still we still have that thought that the knockers can still get him anytime, wherever he may be. Proven. They tour on this island. Para sa nakarating dito. Proof that they'll stop at nothing to kill Fushi. Okay. Yun ang proof natin. That wherever Fushi goes, the knockers will always be there. So, kaya malinis ang plot pa rin ng episode na to. Despite having, uh, despite having flashback moments, pace, flow, and plot, they were seamless. I wasn't able to distinguish one from the other. Kaya ganun kaganda ang episode na to. Right? Again! Okay? Again! Another great episode from this anime. Like I said a while ago. What a way to cap off the first 15 episodes. To tell, to tell all the viewers and well, the fans of the, of to your eternity that next week the road to final, the road to the the road to its finale will now will start. So, to your eternity, episode fifteen. Isip, <laughs> isip ako. Ah, what is up? It's been a long journey for Fushi. Uh, in this anime, okay. from the pilot to uh, to the first half of the run, uh, which is episode ten, and of course to now, talagang malayo na itinahak ng ng bidang ito, and he's gone through a lot of uh, painful experiences, so much as to take the form, take their forms, to assume their forms. Kaya pala, kaya pala niya nagaya si Parona because at that moment in episode 14 na naalala niya bigla si Parona, Parona died. Alright? Kasi, we all know that in order for him to take on the form of something, that, ha that, that being has to die in front of him first. Right? Kumaga, it's a period of extreme pain for Fushi to, to see someone die. Uh, someone that close to him die. Now, in the case of the mole, kasi uh, hindi niya sinasadyang patayin ito. So, he really, he really felt sorry for the mole. And yun, that was the trigger for, for him copying that mole. 
assuming that form. Okay? Now, in the case of Parona, whom he hasn't seen in probably four or five years, bigla niya naalala. So, in-explain din sa kanya ng beholder kanina. More likely, Parona is now dead. That's why you were able to, to assume her form. In the in the most opportune time. Essentially, that's what that's what the beholder said to him. So, kaya pala, right? So at that moment when he when he was um when he was fighting in this tournament, bigla niya naalala si Parona, yung pala namatay na talaga si Parona. Like so kinwento rin niya yung ki kinwento rin niya yung ki Pioran. And his his um Pioran's explanation was this. She probably died an honorable death. She died she probably died protecting someone. Kasi yun yung ang yung ang ugali ni Parone. Right? So she she did protect March. Right? She did protect March. And um she she was a soldier in her tribe. Talagang it's not just her um it's not just her passion, it's whole it's also her um her duty as a soldier of uh, of Dinana. Right? So wow, uh, to think that Paron is already dead and Fushi assumed her form. And no know, knowing that Piora uh, knowing that Parona is an accomplished martial artist at saka ang galing gumamit ng pana nito. Right? Kaya kaya consider na rival ni Haya si si Parona in terms of uh, in terms of warrior skills. Na knowing Haya si she is probably happy that Fushi has taken on Parona's form. Right? So, well, uh, I'm gonna explain. She's going to be one sick uh, that, that's, that crazy bitch. She's going to enjoy if Fushi uses Parona in their uh, in their impending fight. Magandang, magandang laban to. <laughs> so again, to your eternity, episode 15. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Excuse me. <laughs> Next episode has been teasered. Eto na. Finals match between Fushi and Hayase. I cannot wait for this match because, well, we all know. Malalim ang galit ni Fushi kay Hayase for killing March and of course abusing Onigoma. No, one, once is already enough. Eh. Excuse me. <coughs> but before that happens, it'll be Tonori's Tonori's back story, right? At, at least, at least in announce nila. At least in announce nila that there will be a back story to this. We'll just have to wait for next week. And watch that episode. So in the meantime, uh, lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. All right? Happy viewing. Wow! Woo! The Kurokis uh, are now tackling a new case, a new series. Uh, not, not exactly new. A series of suicides in a particular high school has just started. Right? And well. Two of their um, two of their teammates uh, actually stormed through the the high school. Uh, nalaman ba nila uh, that four of them um, were using black magic to um, to sought revenge on another student. Okay, black magic. Ooh, magica negra. It's, it's it's black magic. It's Spanish for black magic. One of them, well, uh, nung naka dumating sila dun sa sa eskwelahan, may nakabigti ng ano, may nakabigti ng estudyante. That was one of the students. Uh, while they were investigating the matter, another one of them committed suicide also. Right in front of them. Tumalon. Uh, lumanding, lumanding sa gate na may mga tusok-tusok. Ayun, patay. And all of a sudden, of their female teammates started shooting at one of the students who was trying to escape. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, eh, 
hindi wala sa SOP ng SWE yon so si talagang si random talaga si randomly fired napigilan siya ng isa niyang kasama then all of a sudden eh ito namang kasamang pumigil sa kanya ang nag ang nagsimulan magpaputo but this time on the Kurokis and uh si Kim si uh, what's that girl's name yung well this was while, while all of this was happening the Kiriharas um were retracing their past pumunta sila dun sa sa kinatitirigan ng bahay nilang ng bahay nila wala na and what and they were they were asking to each other nasa lang nasa lang mga magulang natin then itong apparition nagpakita sa kanilang dalawa and it left a message to Naoya we we found out in this episode that Naoya is actually an empath so that makes him a psychic okay he can feel um he can feel he can feel emotions uh, he can feel another person's emotions right away whether it be positive or negative sino din sin- Finaro na yung message ng, ng apparition na ito which, which led them to their to their father's former factory na ngayon ay eh, abandonado na abandon na may nakita rito yung may nakita rito yung libingan si Naoya so na-curious siya tinatch lang niyang ganon yung headstone na alaman niya kakagal kung ano nangyari so may may nakalibing palang tuta rito na pinatay as sacrifice and it turned out to be one of the students who committed suicide. On the other side naman, nasugpo actually ni... ni... Takuya, yung kasama niya. Right? We all know, he he, emit, he can emit an EMP field. So, na, not only was his... Um, his teammate that was... that got possessed uh, was... Uh, was... was... Uh, was subdued. He even subdued his own brother, si Yuya, who, who was just behind him. So, pero, winarning na siya ni Kimi right before the mission started. Learn to control your powers. So, she's got a point. Okay? She's got a point. Now, figure out kagad ni Kimi kung ano ang source ng possession na to. So, tinrace nila. But, while this was going on, Humingi ng tulong yung yung estudyante na katakas sa mga Kirihara. Okay? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how she ended up there that factory. So, naramdaman na lang. Naramdaman na lang ni Naoya na talagang totoong sinasabi nito. They went to they went to the source. Or yung uh, yung next na dapat nilang puntahan according to the apparition. It led them to this uh, apartment complex na well one unit in that, in that apartment in that apartment complex na may batang psychic ang lakas ng power ng batang ito imagine he can control minds from that distance ganun kalayo nakita ni ni, ni Naoya yung picture ng apparition dun sa sa parang isang, isang picture frame sa loob ng bahay na, sa loob ng unit na yun that means the apparition is related to this family then all of a sudden uh, the Kurokis, the Kurokis team barged in and they subdued the child. Huy! Bakit talaga yung ginalan nyo? Porque it's psychic? Wow. Just goes to show you how cruel the, S- the SWE can be. I really felt sorry for the kid. Final scene. Patakas na ang mga kirihala nun. Nag- nagpang-abot na naman sila ng mga Kuroki. The Kurokis were trying to, um, uh, they're, they're trying to apprehend them na baril ni Takoya, si Naoto. And all of a sudden, someone, someone rescues the Kiriharas by, well, by, by tasering both Kuroki brothers. Most cyberpunk animes are like this, actually. Overall, it's a fucking good episode. Let's talk about the pace first. You can say it's um bordering between moderate to fast. Bakit? Kasi they're again showing two sides of the story. From the side of the Korokis and from the side of the Kiriharas. Uh, we got the Korokis who are who are law enforcers basically. 
or who are yeah who are law enforcers. The Kiriharas are fugitives. Uh, uh, you can't consider them technically. You can't consider them fugitives because tumak ang pinagtakasan ng nila isang laboratory. But we're dealing with a uh, this anime has a corrupt government to deal with. So they're instantly branded as fugitives, criminals. The Kirihara side of the story is medyo medyo subtle yung pace. The side of the Korokis medyo fast kasi they were, uh, they're, they're having uh, they're having a uh, they're having a crisis here. Students are actually killing themselves right in front of their eyes. It was really tense, okay? And someone is pulling the strings. A kid is pulling their strings. Nararamdaman kasi ni Naoya Uh, that there is an intense feeling of rage here going on. So not only did they follow, uh, not, on, not only did they follow the message here, they now now ya yeah, also followed the the path of rage. Yung kung kung kumaga kung saan kung saan talaga ang ang uh, ang emo, ang lakas ng energy na to. Well, rage rage. Is a negative emotion, so it emits negative energy. Yun lang yun eh. And empaths tune into that. Now yeah, the pace, the, the pacing made me realize that it was close to excellent. The pacing, because kung magahiniwala nila talagang there are the, you would actually notice that there are two sides to the story. So the Kirihara side in this episode is slow. The Kuroki side of this episode is fast. So eventually nagpaabot na naman ang dalawang ang dalawang angkan. Eh ayun na, na, nagkabarilan. Flow naman. The first gear shift was when um uh, when the Kurokis and their team took on uh this this case wherein it's a series of suicides that is that has been going on throughout that day. So they took on that case. That gear shift set up a chain of events. That uh, that will lead them that would lead them to another phase of the Kiriharas. Uh, we can we can safely assume that the Kiri that, that the Korokis are assuming that the, that the Kiriharas are behind this. Nope, far from it, as proven by Kimi's uh, by Kimi's deduction in uh, in that scene where they confronted the child when they confronted the kid uh, who was behind all this. Second gear shift is when what? Well, The student that ran that uh, was able to escape uh, to escape their team and uh, yun nung tapos uh, ends up in uh, ends up with the Kiriharas. I call that a gear shift. Kasi if it if it weren't for that gear shift, Naoya would not uh, be able to deduce where this negative energy is. Okay, so based on his um his his powers of empathy, talaga empath siya. I think he did not need to um to to follow the message to the letter. Sinunod nlang sinunod nlang yung sarili niyang kapangyarihan bilang bilang psychic, and they they retraced it. They were able to retrace it according to the uh, the story of that student. And of course, yung yung nadatna nilang parang libingan ng yung pinaglibingan ng tutang ginawang sacrifice para dun sa spell. The spell that went wrong, actually. Horribly wrong. Final gear shift is when the Kuroki's team barged, suddenly stormed into the into the unit and uh, subdued, the, uh, subdued the kid. The kid's psychic. Wow. Talagang makaawa ka sa bata. He's just a kid. His discernment of good and evil is not that um, is not that structured yet. Hindi pa ganong hindi pa ganong katibay ang pag uh, pag determine niya on what's good and what's evil, on what's right and what's wrong, basically. Basa lang nila inaprihin. Pero something good came out of this gear shift. This will probably clear the Kirihalas' name for this case, kasi. Si Kimi na mismo ang nagpatunay eh. Hindi, uh, hindi ang mga kirihara ang may gawa nito, kundi yung batang yun. Yung isa nilang kasamang babae, eh, 
Babarilin na yung dalawa eh. Yung magkapatid, nakirihara. But sabi ni Kimi, nope, it's him. Pak! Inaprehend niya agad yung, yung bata. In a sense, the Kiriharas are off the hook on uh, on this one. Personally, uh, the Kuroki's team cannot put the blame on them. Ang ebidensya itong isa pa nilang kasamang psychic eh. Hindi ang mga Kirihara ang gumawa nito. It's that kid. Kaya niya, kaya, kaya niya, in, kaya niya inaresto agad. Okay, uh, but the bad thing about it is they, they are arresting a kid. Eh ano, kung psychic, his concept of right and wrong are not that structured yet. It's not that well structured like in a, uh, mas structured pa ang concept ng right and wrong ng mga teenager eh. And this is just a kid. Okay? And he has, he has no full control over his powers kasi nga bata pa. He is yet to master his own powers. Pero dala na siguro ng dala na siguro ng ng innocent ni Galit. He, he just wow. He just mind controls his uh, his tormentors into suicide. And at, at that far a distance. Gano nang ganong kalayo. Nako, na control niya mga mga utak nito. Imagine if he were an adult. Imagine if he can fully control his powers. Ba? Pero mas nakakatakot 'yun. <laughs> Pero nonetheless, the SWE has just apprehend, apprehended a child. Paki namin kung psychic 'to. You get what I'm saying, mga lifestyle? But anyway, plot-wise. <sighs> Malinis. Although there although this episode presented two sides of a story, effectively at that the plot is still clean because it has the same continuity it it also showed how how the how these two families will cross paths again they eventually cross paths again in this episode continuity is key to a clean plot this episode followed the same continuity as the viewer you would uh, you you would pay close attention you would get that pen shot of paying close attention to both sides of this episode story and eventually uh, you will uh, you'll see the light of things when uh, when the Kiriharas and the Korokis cross cross paths again you get what I'm saying so that's why I told you guys the plot of this episode is really clean base flow and plot by coming together, they gave us one great episode, as expected from a cyberpunk anime. So, Nighthead 2041, episode 3. Sir. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Tell you the truth, mga lifestyle. This is the first time that I have ever seen a cyberpunk anime with supernatural tones in it. Normally, uh, if you say cyberpunk, it's all techno, it's all sci-fi, it's all sci-fi, it's sci-fi all the way. But with Nighthead, they nilagyan nilang konting ane, konti, konting. Well, basically, they threw a monkey wrench in the genre. <laughs> this anime is throwing a monkey wrench into the genre because of its supernatural tones. The Kiriharas, the Kirihara brothers. They're both psychics. The Kurokis, um, Pakuya, is the uh, is the psychic here. He's the only one. Uh, I, hindi ako sure kung ano. Hindi ako sure kung si Yuya psychic din. But who knows? He he just maybe he maybe he's maybe he's just hiding his own powers in fear in fear of this government. We don't know. This anime has yet to tackle that. This anime can still be classified as cyberpunk because well, the dystopic society is all is is still there. The outrageous technology is still there, and of course, of course, the outrageous laws made behind it. And both sets of brothers have issues to ta- have issues to deal with. 
especially the Kiriharas. They have been lab rats nearly all their lives. And they were, yeah, uh, escaping that laboratory is, uh, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to them. We are still going to keep tabs on this anime because bottom line, mga ka lifestyle, I really love a good cyberpunk anime. <laughs> because I'm a fan of the genre. So again, Nighthead 2041, episode 3. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Manga Lifestyle. Three episodes in. Nothing has been teasered for the next episode. <laughs> it's getting into that habit now. What's the best thing to do? Simply lang. Wait for next week and watch that episode. So that. We can deep dive into it more than this one. But nonetheless, this was a great episode. So in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, alright? But, while Chukechki was busy battling Sally, ayun, he, she got, Frau got the chance to have herself revived and I'm impressed let me give you a rundown of the episode so there's this vampire running around uh, the town Sally and her group team Sally if you may or oh, went into this uh, into the town team Sally uh, decided to stay in for, uh, for a few days but in this town, there's also a discrimination against demi-human. Pagpasok na pagpasok pa lang nila ni Frau, she's already experiencing it. Talk about racism. Becky is now known as Carrot. And um, we don't know how she got the name. But anyway, so Becky and Carrot, Carrot and Frau were shopping for, for essentials. Carrot saw firsthand the discrimination against Frau. Okay, Frau is a demi-human. So, kumbaga, yung pinagbilan nilang vegetable vendor ng mga yung carrot supply ni Frau, talagang binastos. Imbis na abu, abu, abutan, abutan niya ng sukli na maayos, hinulog niya sa kalye yung sukli. Bastos! That's um, that's how much um, that's how much discrimination Frau has been going through from time to time. So it has been revealed in this episode. And Carrot really wants to get back at these humans. If she, if she only had her horn, he would she would annihilate them all. Pero meron balang uh, meron bala siyang na sense na ogre. Right? Who is actually the vampire that is that is terrorizing this town? Putang ina, ogre pala yun eh. Vampire nga. Okay, nangangagat. So, his horns are this. Yung mga pangil niya. Ang mismong sungay niya. The ogre's name is Kyuketsuki. In the process niya si Kyuketsuki, uh, ni-request na uh, patayin lahat ng mga tao rito. Because, well, she can't do it herself anymore because she doesn't have a horn. She's a former ogre. Pinuwento pa ni Carrot kay Kyuketsuki na uh, may mga kasama siya. And pinuwento rin niya si Sally na, na may ganitong power na ano. Well, Kyuketsuki has already prioritized whom to kill first. Who steps in to, um, to prevent that from happening? Si Frau. Well, she, she tried her best and Basically, Kyuketsuki took half of her body off. Talagang, ang tinira, ang tinira lang niya yung paa. Kasi meron din pala siyang cannon na power. Her body parts from the waist down, yun ang natira kay Frau. Yan yun, na-sense naman ni Sally. Tumakbo siya doon. And, well, she faced Kyuketsuki. Then, 
that while this carnage was going on, pinakita si Frau parang nasa langit. And she was talking to an angel named Atla. So, ni-request niya na pabalikin siya. Sin- tinanong sa kanya ni Atla, bakit ayaw mo ng reincarnation? And simple lang yung rason niya. Her companions need her. So, pinagbigyan. So, ni-revive siya. Well, parang wala nangyari. And, whoa! She, she goes demon on Kyuketsuki. One, uh, one punch through his body was all it took to take this vampire down. Yun lang ang ginawa ni Frau. <laughs> Binutas yung katawan dito. Isang suntok lang. Patay! But, um, that, that took a lot out of her, energy-wise. So, after delivering that, after delivering the killing blow, bumulagta na siya. So, final scene. What? Kinwento na ni Kyuketsuki kay Carrot that Carrot was the o- wasn't the only one who betrayed their kind. Pati raw siya. Because he married a human. But, on the night of their wedding, he kills her by, what going vampire on her. That was the day he, um, I think, uh, he regretted for the rest of his life. And he actually envies Carrot dahil wala na horn si Carrot so her ogre instincts are now zero. Non-existent. So she doesn't have to deal with those kinds of things anymore. E mukhang e mukhang nagpapasalamat pa nga sa kaila frow na pinatay siya. So he can he can finally rest in peace now. Because well, he is he has um served being an ogre overall it's a good episode it's a good episode but there uh, there is one issue that um, I just really can't um, get out of my head regarding this anime but we're gonna be professional about it we will break this episode down ARD style right now pace the build up is there it was properly paced because uh, you need a build up pace towards the, um, the this impending battle right mukhang yeah Sally Sally did go peach did go peach boy on this okay did go peach eye on this so but before that hindi naman ka, hindi naman ka agad action scene action scene no you, for this great a uh, fight scene you really need to build it up really good. So, of course, the discrimination, the companionship between, of course, Sa- uh, Sally, Frau, and Carrot. Okay, that's there. Medyo talagang... Carrot really need, really, um, really wanted to do something about these, that, do these people that were bullying Frau. Basically, yeah, that, that, that's bullying. Okay, that's bullying. Kasi hindi discriminate nga si Frau eh. The build-up was really good. Then went to the went to the fight scene. Now the episode was properly paced. Flow, naman. Well, first gear shift that I saw here was during that market scene where Frau was buying carrots for her own supply of carrots. So, siyempre binayara niya. Eh pero tinitingnan palang niya yung mga carrots. Umangal na yung vendor. Pinaghinalabang nga si Frau na wala siyang, wala siyang pambayad sa ganong kalaking supply ng carrots eh. Binayaran naman niya. But the vendor totally disrespected Frau. Binagsak yung sukli sa, ano, sa kalye. Bastos yun! Uh, I don't care if you're, um, if you're discriminatory to someone or some, some race. You don't exchange money uh, professionally tae ka probably Carol felt the same way right pero talagang she is shocked you can see the look of shock on Carol's face when that happened so you can say that that gear ship triggered the se- triggered the chain of events for the for the rest of the episode, 
Talagang dun yun talaga ang nag-trigger kay kay Carrot na gantihan naman ito na sa ginawa sa ginawa ni Lucky Frau. Eh, well, being an ex-ogre, she, she also has connections. Kaya niya kaya niya nakontak si Kyuketsuki. The, the ogre who, whom they call the ogre of blood. Pero, to humans, he's a vampire. Yeah, that, that led to it. Final gear shift. Kala nyo, tatlo, no? Hindi, dalawa lang yung nakita ko. Dalawa lang yung talagang sure ko na gear shift. It was when, well, Frau faced off against Kyuketsuki. Well, she, I, I, I guess she overheard everything. Pero, wala siyang pake. This ogre, okay, this vampire is going after Sally. Total, nandito na siya. Abay, pig, kaya siguro ni Frau, abay, pigilan ko na to. Ayaw ko magpang-abot sila ni Sally, kaya dito, kaya dito pala, titipukin ko na to. Her first attempt, nope. Yep. Kyuketsuki, Um, disintegrated half her body with, with its cannon. So, wala hindi nila nagawa. Draw out her new power. Nakakatakot. <laughs> Nakakatakot. Imagine, a, a, a cute honey bunny like Frau, bigla na lang, bigla na lang may tutubong pakpak na demonyo sa likod niya at yung mata niya bigla mamumula. <laughs> bigla mamumula sa galit. She absolutely went demon on Kyuketsuki. Nagkakalin si Kyuketsuki. Ano, so, ano to? Ano, ano to masisense niya kapangyarihan na to? But before he could ever figure it all out, Frau takes him out. Pinutas yung katawan dito, dito sa, sa ano ng puso, dito, right here. Wow! <laughs> wow! I never, I never could imagine Frau being this scary. The reason why I call it the gear shift is because, wow! If it weren't for Frau challenging Kyuketsuki to this fight, she wouldn't resort, we, we, we wouldn't see na meron siya palang ganitong power na tinatago. At ni-request pa niya sa, sa kanyang guardian angel na si, Alt, si Atla na ibigay na sa kanya kasi kailangan siya ng mga kaibigan niya. And she only needs one shot at it. That's a, for me, that's a crucial gear shift. Because nagkaroon ng kar- sariling character development dito si Frau. Right? Although in, uh, in the uh, most unexpected way. <laughs> you, can't call her on, you can't call her an underdog anymore after this gear shift. Nope. Calling her an underdog would be racist. <laughs> These two gear shifts that I saw will play a role in this anime, especially the last one. Yeah, I therefore conclude. <laughs> Plot-wise, Peach Boy Riverside is at its old tricks again. Um, there's a main continuity, but every every five to ten minutes, there's a there's a flashback. I don't get the strategy as Asai Productions is um is is using for this anime. The plot is um it's somewhere between clean and well ironed out. You get what I'm saying, Maka Lifestyle? Uh, in the last episode, yes, the plot was really clean. Right? I like the plot of that episode, but due to its um uh Due to its of uh, order in broadcast, it only got this from me. That should have been the pilot, even in broadcast order. I got mixed feelings with the plot of this one. Kaya it's neither. Um, it's somewhere between clean and well ironed out, because what well, chronological order in an anime is very important to me. Mga lifestyle. Okay. Because well, if you're going to base it in a ma- you're going to base it from if you're going to base it on a manga, separate chronological order yon. Now, in order not to disappoint the manga fans that will watch the anime adaptation, kailangan dapat chronological order na. And for those who will be 
getting into animes, they may find Peach Boy Riverside confusing. Kasi, yeah, yun ang magiging feeling nila eh. Pa- parang, parang wala sinusunod sa chronological order dito ah. It is based on the manga. It is based on a manga. Eh, basta, it's somewhere between clean and well ironed out. Pace, flow, and plot Um, have their own way of making this episode look good. I mean, but there is still uh, that issue that is really that is really bugging me since um, since since episode three. Okay, since episode three. Uh, I'll explain it later. So, Peace Boy Riverside, episode five. Bakit? Asay Productions in a well in an article I in an article I um uh, I just read a few minutes after I saw the episode. Okay, I got I, I got to tell it to you guys. Okay. I, I need to be honest with you. Okay, I need to be honest with you. Mas ginusto pa nila palang hindi sundan ang chronological order ng manga for the anime. That is a dangerous decision to make because, for me, okay, um, from the stand from the standpoint of a branding consultant, you're going to base this anime on a, on its on its manga, okay, on the manga. Your first audience here will be the readers of that manga. So, if you're going to decide that. You're, you, you're not going to do this anime adaptation in chronological order. I think you just signed this anime's death warrant because of that decision. Sayang. Because the first, like I said oh, just a while ago, your first audience will be the readers of the manga. Sila pa lang magtataka na kung bakit ganito ang order of things sa anime. Best example is episode 4. Obvious na obvious naman, this is the actual pilot. Now, I also read from that article that they, ha- they have been planning to make Sally the main character in the anime, not Mikoto. Kasi I think sa, sa manga, Mikoto is the main... Ah, uh, hindi. Parang... Parang split, split view eh. From the view of Mikoto and from the view of Sally, ang manga. So, that's easy, that, that's easy to, that's easy to make. That is easy to compromise. Eh di siyang gawin yung lead character ng anime. But, did you have to sacrifice the manga's chronological order for this one? For me, It's a bad decision. It's a bad decision. You wanted new anime fans to to get attracted to this one. Ngayon, well, for seasoned anime fans, I would I would take this in. I would take this in kasi Yeah? Because uh, there are, there are some There are some moments in in this anime that are really exciting like 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 what I just saw in this episode yung the fight scene between Frau and uh Kyuketsuki. Right? Uh, that, that 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 was violent, okay? That was violent and a little bit disturbing because here you have a um a demi-human that looks like a rabbit all of a sudden All of a sudden, all of a sudden becoming the devil himself. <laughs> Then takes out this ogre in one punch. Binutas. Nakakabutas pa ng katawan yung, yung suntok niya. Okay, we gotta give Asai Productions that. Okay? So we can't, I really just can't um, accept 
the decision made by Asai, Pro Asai Productions when I when I found when I read this article. That, that's how I found that's how I found out their 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 plan for this anime. I totally disagree with it. But what saved this episode from getting getting a lower rating again? Is that particular fight scene? And besides, who's this Atla? Paano nakilala ni Frau to? So, if you're if you're a rookie anime fan, you would be totally confused. Well, even I got confused. <laughs> Matagal na ako. Halos buong boy na ako nanonood ng anime. Kahit ako na confused. <laughs> Kahit ako na confused. So, again, I totally disagree with Asai Productions' um, decision to, to jumble the episodes of this anime. They should have uh, followed the chronological order of the manga. That would be um, that would be a safer decision. Now, uh, now, if the director if the director thinks he's doing this for the sake of art. He's got another thing coming. As long as um, well, Peach Boy Riverside is only it's only a twelve episode run, so there's no way we can we can uh, we can make them change their minds. So that's your call, as as a productions. Do not expect the two thumbs up from me from now on. Sorry. So again, Peach Boy Riverside, episode five. of the next episode has been teasered. I hope the uh, this next episode will give me another reason to give it another one thumb up for this anime. Basta. My opinion stands. This anime will never get the two thumbs up from me. As long as Asai Productions sticks by its decision to jumble. Uh, to jumble the episodes. So... Until then, mga lifestyle, watch the other reviews in this digest, alright? Well, I personally want to let off steam. Wow! <laughs> this is probably one of the most gruesome episodes the franchise has ever released. All I can say is, nagbisto lang serial killer si Mjol dito. Until in the final scene, um, Satoko puts her down. Then eventually, Satoko turns the gun on herself, blew her own brains out. There's a reason why I just um, why I just summarized the entire episode that way because it is too gruesome and disturbing to to lay it out to you guys. All right, so if you haven't seen the episode. Watch it and judge it for yourselves. Okay? But overall, it's a fucking another fucking good episode from from season two. Well, if not for the entire reboot. Okay? Again, let I remind you, everyone, we are seeing Higurashi through Satoko's eyes. Base. Hmm. For the first time, the pacing is impeccable because as Myon is trying to get her way as to how this curse is going to be stopped, all for Keiichi's sake. While she's doing that, she's killing someone, and you really have to um, you really have to incorporate a really good pacing for this. But assuming that you've already seen season one. Unless you haven't seen season one, do not watch this episode. Right? Kasi yung excitement, yung um, the disturbing nature of season two, you won't totally get it if you haven't seen season one. But if you but if you have, 
Well, impeccable ang pacing. Flow naman. First gear shift here is um akala ni Mion na napatulog lang niya ang lola niya. Okay, si, si Madam Oreo Sonozaki. Sonozaki. So, he, she puts her on this uh, on this crucifix-like device in their in the Sonozaki's torture chamber. Eh, hindi na nagre-respond. So, kinapahan niya yung pulso rito. Wala na. Napatay na pala niya through, through that taser of hers. Eh, halatang hindi pa marunong gumamit ng stun gun si, ano eh, si, si Mion. Eh, dito mo, dito ba naman ni taser yung matanda? If trauma has been placed or yan, an electric shock is placed here, wala. Mapapatay mo talaga yung tao. Kaya nga, there's, a, there's, a, there's an idiomatic expression that says, going for the jugular. Yup, that is true. If trauma is placed right here, in the specific area of the neck, kahit electric, uh, more de deadlier ang electric, electrical shock dito, wala. That person's a goner. Eh, lalo na dito, matanda pa. <laughs> eh, talaga, talaga, mapapatay mo yung tao. So, that's why I call it a gear ship. This sets off the chain of events that, well, that, that you can actually brand Mion as a serial killer. Inisaysa na niya eh. First, yung lola niya. Then, the mayor of, uh, the mayor of, the mayor of Hinamizawa. Who, who is actually the head of another of another of, of one of the three families the Kimiyoshis yan dapat nga torture lang yung mangyayari inapatay rin niya to so sets off the chain of events second gear shift is when she kills Rika with her own bare hands you remember that scene when um kinakausap ni Rika si Keiichi in a very disturbing way Yung, yung biglang pulang mata niyang ganun Right after that In-approach na si Nimeon Ayun Pinatay din sa sakal Yung bata And now We know how Rika ended up in that septic tank I call that a gear ship because Well She's completely gotten Through, the, through that gear ship She's completely gotten rid of all three heads of all heads of the three major families in Hinamizawa. And it took only a span of roughly 12 hours. Napatay niya Final gear shift is when, well, uh, kinumpronta niya si, well, dum, actually, dumalo si Sato ko dun sa bahay nila with a bottle of soy sauce. So, kinumpronta niya agad si Sato ko. I am through with your lies. Ano ang, ano ang kinalaman mo? Well, Sato had no choice but to kill her. Then, proceeded to killing herself. Need I say more? <laughs> These three gear ships will play a role in this, uh, in, in season 2 of this anime. Yeah, down the line. I, kaya I am warning you mga lifestyle If you haven't seen season 1 of the reboot Go watch that first before watching this one Plot wise What? Planchado Alright Vintage Higurashi Planchado This is the type of um, a well ironed out plot that only Higurashi can do Okay I am warning you again, mga lifestyle. If you haven't seen season one of the reboot, go watch it now before watching this one. Sigurado, pag itong inuna nyo, hindi nyo maiintindihan. Hindi nyo, um, hindi nyo magiget sa pagiging disturbing ng Higurashi. That's all I can say about the plot. Planchado, but it's a requirement to watch season one first. Pace, flow, and plot. Yep. Um, they all came together for this episode. Talagang wow. Okay. Again, one of the most gruesome episodes I have ever seen in an anime. 
This stops episode 4 of season 1. And of course, episode 4 of season 2. La, tobyun. Compared to the carn the, the carnage Myon uh pulled off here in C in, in episode 6. Wala, walang sinabi yung walang sinabi yung dalawang episode 4 na yun. Walang sinabi yung dalawang episode 4 na yun. Like the Hinami Sawa syndrome virus has totally taken her over. Talagang nawala yung pagka good nature niya rito. Ganun niya kamahal si Kichi kaya niya nagawa ito. Right? Yeah, you could say that. So, Higurashi Sotsu episode 6. Isip pa. Oh! <laughs> Two thumbs up! This is probably the shortest review I will ever make. Because I would like to leave you all to um to this honest word. If you haven't watched season 1 of the reboot, go watch that one first. And this episode has has proven my point already. Kapag hindi nyo talaga napalo dyan, hindi nyo magigets ang season 2. Huwag nyo nang, ipag, huwag nyo nang ipagpilitan sa akin na papanorin nyo lang itong season na to, tsaka na season 1. Ulul! <laughs> who are you taking Who are you taking me for? Okay? Go watch season 1 of the reboot first before watching season 2. But, kung napanon nyo na season 1, in its, uh, in its initial airing, congratulations. You are truly enjoying season 2. So again, Higurashi Sotsu episode 6. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this season, mga night style. Well, in typ typical Higurashi fashion, time out of the next episode has been teasered. Bagong mini art. Okay? Yun ang masasabi ko. So, this, this episode ends the mini, then ends one mini arc. So, what does Sato, what does Sato have in mind now? Okay? What does Sato have in mind now? Now that her experiment with Myon is successful. Not to her, it's successful because with, Wow. I'm at a loss for words for this episode, right? On, on, and on how you guys should expect uh, things for the next episode. Kaya ang gawin na lang natin, wait for next week and watch that episode. So, in the meantime, mga ka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, alright? Enjoy the other reviews. Wow! They're up against uh, our um, our lead characters are now up against um, another absurd phenomenon called freezing. Okay, uh, apat na apat sa mga schoolmates nila ang naging biktima na nito. An investigation was launched, being led by Misuho at ang kinawa pa niyang assistant si Nakara, uh, going around asking questions and uh, they even tried well and they actually quarreled over um something petty okay I, I already I already forgot what they were what they were quarreling about in front of Pony who is the um, who is the student council president okay and well Nagala just walks out and goes back to their camp uh well, their camp consists of, of course, Nagara, si Asakase, uh, the uh, the flyer, okay, Nosomi, and uh, and 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 Rajdan, the uh, yung mukhang Bombay, uh, yung mukhang Indian. Agad naman yung tinex si Misuho and apologizing for what happened. And the next day, well, looks like they were. Um, they were ready to take out this phenomenon because be right before that, right before the quarrel, actually, nakita nila yung mga missing students na nag freeze. They were all oddballs, okay, in well teenager terms. 
but they are actually recluses kumbaga no one uh, no one cared if they existed so this this freezing phenomenon fed on that and hence ayun na freeze sila physically but um i think astrally nope they are still alive to each his own okay kumbaga may isa nga eh uh, gamer na nagla-live stream yung isa naman mahilig sa gym yung isa naman uh, well, mahilig sa handheld games yung isa naman mahilig ma- mahilig gumawa ng mga stuff toys Miss Ho and Nagara they arrived at a solution to and all this they well Nagara dragged in a sort of um, sort of a wind machine type of thing laki yung 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 ginagamit yung ginagamit sa pagsushoot ng mga disaster films yeah that big a wind machine then it that wind machine blow blow that blow those dark curtains over so they're all they're all up in the air then Nagara suddenly shoots it down case closed the four the four mis- the four frozen students they got unfrozen because of this Nagara and Mizo saved the day at the end of the day final scene what is this thing that Hoshi is um, so focused on para siyang blackboard na mayroong illustration ng eclipse na araw and he was asking a savior who that who might that be overall it's yeah it's a really weird but damn good episode okay the weirdness ne- never ceases to amaze me <laughs> okay pace well i think sunny boy has um is trying to impart to us that this is the pacing that they want okay that this this is the pacing the anime is going to be known for the pacing is intriguing again and um just right for well just right for both beginner and advanced audiences to to comprehend because well they're in a really absurd dimension right now so what else can happen in this world that they haven't uh and they haven't discovered it will the pacing will really make you uh ask that kind of a question wow if you're into uh if you're into weirdness yep this episode's for you <laughs> flow man well first gear ship is when um the first victim of this freezing phenomenon was discovered young gamer na nagla live stream everyone and well everyone thought that the blue fire was weird enough nope this this takes the cake for now <laughs> second gear ship is when uh when misoho and nagara finally found the four the four frozen students they're not actually frozen Kumaga. This uh, freezing phenomenon that exists in this world fed on their reclusiveness. You could say that they got antisocial behavior that uh, that this world doesn't approve of. It's obvious that this world does not encourage reclusiveness, and it responds like that. The victims are encased in kumaga parang ikaw ni Rajdani pocket deep pocket worlds okay kung mga talaga sarili nila mundo to each his own represented by black curtains wow if if you have if you have seen this episode you would find these black curtains disturbing if not scary I, I found it scary I found it really scary final gear ship is when well they were able to um, they were able to hush away this phenomenon by incorporating a 
humongous wind machine na dinala ni Nakara and of course when it, that entire uh, subworld if you may is up in the air he shoots it down with that um parang I don't, I don't know what I don't know what you can call that device kasi color ni okay, colorful <laughs> colorful siya but they were able to um to destroy that uh that phenomenon literally destroy it these three gear shifts that I that I've determined uh, may or may not play a role in in this anime but the more likely will be um second no uh, nahanap na nila Miss Hot Nagor Miss Hot Nagara yung mga nawawalang estudyante uh, that will probably play that will probably play a role down the line in this anime but wow those are three of the weirdest gear shifts I have ever seen okay <sighs> Madhouse you're you continue to impress me but anyway plot wise Malinis although the pacing may be a little bit fast okay pero it's fast but fast but weird it the, the fast the rather fast pace of this episode justifies the weirdness okay because well basically Mizuho and Nagara were in a race against time to um to to help these to help these students snap out of the freezing snap out of this freezing phenomenon all throughout it has kept me focused to the case as the viewer it made me glue my eyes to the screen yup it did that the plot was so clean it really invited me to deep dive reclusiveness it's a rather uh, yeah it's a rather negative um mindset to be in because it's okay to be shy but to be but to be uh but to the point when you're reclusive already yep that could bring negative things into your life as represented by the um the freezing phenomenon in this episode so yeah the plot made me realize that just now <laughs> Kalinis ang plot ng episode na to. So it made me deep dive at the very last minute of this review. Pace, flow, and plot. Yep. They came together for this episode. They pulled through. Madhouse has been known to delve into the weird, the absurd, and yeah, sometimes disturbing. That's why uh, that's why they got a that's why this animation studio has some has a cult following around the world. Including me another great episode from this anime although it's only top it's only three episodes in so sunny boy episode three is known for these kinds of animes I got those perfect blue feels again because of the, uh, the because of the uh, yung mismong animation ng episode na to. excuse me as I was saying Madhouse is known for these kinds of weirdness okay and I got those um, like I said a while ago I got those perfect blue feels again because solely of the animation Karitong karito rin kasi yung animation sa perfect blue I really find Madhouse's animation style bordering between weird and disturbing You get what I'm saying mga kalahay style But hey, story wise They are at it again And in all, in all indications, Sunny Boy may may go down that road to becoming the weirdest anime of 2021 at least in my um at least in my current review roster yep 
This is the weirdest. If Higurashi is the most disturbing, this is the weirdest. But I'm loving Madhouse again because of this. I am loving that animation studio because of Sonny Boy. Wow. <laughs> Weirdness invites deep dives. That's what I've that's what I've been proving. Oh, that's what I've proven with this episode. More of these, please. So again, Sunny Boy, Episode Three. sa secret yung sa secret hideout nila and that's where well unfortunately Mina became a full blown curse bearer she kills uh, she kills their other three friends but uh, who comes to the rescue Louis he takes Mina's hand off he eventually succumb to his own uh, curse bearer status and he go 
close after Noy. And nap- napigilan siya ni Noy. And well, nagpakagat na rin si Noy because he couldn't find it in his heart to kill Louis. And who comes to the rescue this time? Louis' grandfather. Siya na mismo ang tumugot sa ulo ng apo niya. Wow. That was really disturbing. And um, nalaman ni Charlatan tuloy ang buong origin story ni Noy and so are the viewers of course. Final scene. Charlatan was about to take Noy's true name. All of a sudden, shock! Hinawi siya ni Vanitas. I guess Charlatan is scared of Vanitas because of his track record against them. Biniro pa niya si Noy eh. Ano ka ba naman, Noy? Did you break your ankle or something while dancing? <laughs> Nako pa magpiro ang mokong. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Vanitas saves the day. Overall, it is a really good episode. This is probably one of the best backstory episodes I have ever seen. One of the most disturbing at, at that. Whew. Kagatang dito, kagatang doon. <laughs> By merely watching this single episode, you would instantly tell that you're watching a vampire anime. <laughs> Pace. Well, the pacing was well balanced. First two thirds, uh, no, no, first half of the episode, it's quite a bit slow because we are being shown what Noy's childhood was like. And well, you could say it was the happiest of times because he, he was always with his two best friends. Yeah. Noi at si Do- uh, Noi si Louis at si Domi all three of them grew up together essentially oh no basically and the other half turned it took, uh, their friendship took a disturbing turn when um, Louis started acting strange yeah by you, you could tell because gumagawa siya ng mga wooden stake yeah yung talagang siya mismo gumagawa at si Noy mismo nagtatake and all Louis could explain was this is my gift to you eventually when uh, Louis died meron pala siya talagang ipinaubaya kay Domi a huge chest when Noy accidentally dropped it ayun lumabas lahat ng wooden stake na ginawa ni Louis so far talagang nag-gets kagad ni Noy na Louis really wants Noy to kill him just in case uh, his he becomes a full-blown curse bearer Noy's origin story had a, had a really sad and disturbing ending mahawa ka kay Noy and that's probably his motivation on why he is doing this and why he is helping Vanitas in his missions And the plot made me realize that. Flo naman. Well, first gear shift here is obviously that moment when Charlatan uh, manipulates Noy. Talagang demonyong kalaban nito. Ang Charlatan. It delved into Noy's past. It found out, it found Noy's psychological weakness and it abuse that to the hilt it was that close to completely killing Noi if it weren't for Vanitas this gear shift made uh, made us see as to how vulnerable vampires can be against against this charlatan if it weren't also for this gear shift we wouldn't see Noi's complete origin story second gear shift is when Noi first noticed uh, Louis making these wooden stakes That particular gear shift showed us how um, how caught up Louis is in ensuring his death will be an honorable one. Kasi, well, tinanong niya na sa lolo niya, Grandfather, am I a curse bearer? Indirectly, sinabi ni, sinabi ng, sinabi ng lolo niya na, yes, you are. Pero, I am not Uh, I'm not holding it against you. I'm letting you live your life. Do as you please. Parang ganun yung yung uh, 
yung gusto niya sabihin sa apo niya. For, for the, if it weren't for that gear shift, yep, we would have our first deep dive. Don't you think, mga ka-lifestyle? Final gear shift is when um, charlatan finally has Noi in its hands. Tinatanong na nga niya kung anong true name ni Noi. So, this is how charlatan operates. Talagang, talagang uungkatin niya ang nakaraan ng vampire. Look for something, something it can, something it can, uh, it can anchor its power on. Ayun, nakakita ng weakness. Panayang, ang unique selling proposition niya kay Noy. Don't you want to see Louie again? Uh, alam kong nalulungkot si Louie ngayon. Gusto mo ba siyang makasama? Hmm. Disturbing, ano? Charlatan would do anything to get the vampire's true name. Even to the point na i-explore niya ang pinaka-sadness ng vampire. In this case, noise, sadness. Well, buti nilang dumating agad si Vanitas. Napigilan niya. Simpleng hawi lang yung ginawa niya. And well, it's gone. Despite his borderline psychotic nature, yep, <laughs> he's, still the, he's still the main protag here. Wow. That's three of the most disturbing gear shifts I have ever seen in an anime. Okay. And I thought I would leave the disturbing parts to, to Higurashi. Nope. Even here, in a much hyped, in an almost mainstream anime, you would see things this disturbing. They may play a role down the line in this anime. I say for the first time, may may uh, may booting thing sa katauhan ni Noi and it had to be uh, probably yeah Charlatan is the big bad of this anime yep Vanitas and Noi will have problems uh, in dealing with this this abomination uh, its mere presence doesn't only threaten vampires but also humans damay damay na Plotwise, Tanchado. Kasi we had to uh, we had to delve into two parts of the two almost two uh, nearly different parts of the story. Kasi pinakikilaman ni Charlatan yung yung psyche ni Noi, and of course we see Noi's origin story probably through the eyes of Charlatan. You have to have a well ironed out plot to to make this episode seamless. To make um, that part of the episode uh, a legit part of the storyline. It's a really disturbing plot, I gotta tell you. But a well ironed out one. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all work together for this episode. As a result, it's a really good episode from this anime. So, the case study of Vanitas, episode 5. sometimes trigger sleepiness when you hear when you hear some someone or something snore <laughs> but if it's too loud yeah it's annoying <laughs> right now no nope. uh, his snores are not that annoying right now but anyway what mental state will Noi be in after this that's what I want to know in probably future episodes not not necessarily the next one because well it's probably the first time that someone has tinkered into his mind and well 
anybody will feel violated after that. Much less a vampire. No one knows its true name except the vampire itself. Charlatan was, yep, it was that. It was that close to getting Noi's true name. We might have lost Noi here. Thank God for Vanitas for, yeah, for, for rescuing him. I'm beginning to, um, I'm beginning to question Vanitas' motives for, um, for doing all this. We should start questioning his motives from now on. But, uh, he's, he's still a lovable character. He's a certified anti-hero. But we've yet to, um, this anime has yet to delve into, well, Vanitas' past, if he has one, or whatever issues he has. I think, th I think this anime should delve into that even more, if it hasn't. So again, The Case Study of Vanitas, Episode 5. I'm impressed. Let's run it down. Now, I'll focus on Bong episode sa home life ni Aruto. He has a um uh, a suicidal mom and an an overworked father. And what? Well, he's basically overworked himself to home chores. At um hindi na pala siya nag-aaral ngayon. He has to constantly observe his mother for um, suicidal kasi parati may, sui, may suicidal tendencies ang nani ni Arto. And she's also taking drugs for it. Uh, mayroon mga prescription drugs kasi sa mga ganun eh. Uh, unfortunately. One scene talagang nag-attempt uli yung nani ni Arto. Muntik lamang pasagasa sa train. Eh, you know, he was able to he was able to rescue her in time. Ang una na kapansin sa team si Ryuhei pa. Because Ryuhei was in the same situation before when uh, when his brother died. Kaya talagang relate siya sa sa pinagdaraanan ni na, ni, ni Aruto. Although he, he doesn't fully understand the situation. He's help he is trying to he was trying to help Aruto. Um, let it all out through, of course, through kickboxing or just simply telling, telling anybody on the team about his, uh, about his problem. One night while uh, while Arto and Ryuhei were were in the kickboxing gym, ayun, may biglang may bumukas na porthole. Ibig sabi, isa lang ibig sabihin nun, may mission sila. So they went into the porthole. Ayun, meron nga. They were trying to take, they were, they were trying to look for the dreamer. Ayun, nakita nila. While Aruto was dealing with his uh, his home life, this dreamer was already getting into the drug, was getting into that dream drug. He's always being bullied by his bosses. No woman wants to go out with him. And uh, he's overworked. And he, be, he just basically wants to disappear. Talagang uh, sawa na sa buhay niya. And, well, Hindi naman siya mapupunta sa Tromery kung hindi niya kinuha, hindi niya tinake ang drop na to. Itong dream drug. He took that drug and basically and he offered his wish to disappear. What happens to the team? Well, they got encased into this huge force field na zero gravity and uh, the dreamer is now just this. A dot. Literal na dot. Sa, sa, mali, sa mali na bolang ganon. Now, Arto just remembered what uh, what the man said before he became this. 
He said he wanted just wanted to disappear. At yun, na, na-deduce niya na kung ano ang kailangan nito. And, humingi pa nga ng tulog kay Ryu eh, pero hindi pa siya papalayo. <laughs> Gago nito si Aro to eh. Bata pa lang ang gulang na. So, nilap, nilapitan niya yung dot at yeah, parang gano'n lang niya. Parang gano'n lang. Kumbaga, he's um, giving that dot his own warmth. Eh, nalandaman ng dot. And, that led to that force field disappearing and uh, unfortunately they weren't able to save the dreamer's life talagang uh, namatay na nakadapa with that mark talagang namatay na siya dun. they just concluded that um, napalaya natin siya sa sa hirap niya sa buhay eventually uh, well the aftermath of that is well Aruto uh, was able to convince himself that he has friends to 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 help him out in this uh, in this situation. So, yun nga, nagtulong-tulong nga ang buong team na pasahi, pasayahin ang nanay niya through cooking. So, gumawa sila ng cabbage rolls o pinakain niya sa pinakain nila sa nanay ni Aruto. Nagustuhan naman. Real food. Okay, it, it's real food. At um basically Kumingin ang dispensa ang nanay niya na uh, he has to go through all this just because of her failure as a mother. Eh, yun, na, nagkapataba na naman yung mag-ina. Eh, it's, a, it's a really good scene to watch. Final scene. It's actually a post-credit. We find ourselves in this church with this guy na may maskara na with that mark. Yung Nakita ni Ryuhi na pumatay sa kakapatid niya? Yup, that's the guy. Kaya nga post-credit eh. So, it left a lot of questions. Overall, it's a really good episode. It's a really good episode. Pace, understandable naman kung, kung mabagal kung mabagal nga ang pace ng episode na to, it's understandable because bawat member ng team na to, uh is or have personal issues talaga talagang cyberpunk anime ito the society they're in is questionable the technology involving uh involving the lead characters yep it's outrageous <laughs> and of course yeah the, the highlight of this particular cyberpunk anime all members of this team of lead characters yep they they have issues Aruto is no exception kasi talagang domestic yung kanyang yung kanyang issue. All he needs is someone to lend an ear. And well, Ryuhei was the first one. So, the pacing made me understand that. Kung binilisan nila ang pacing nito, baka hindi ko na-appreciate yung yung call this yung episode na to bottom line flow naman well first gear shift there was the um the opening scene where Aro to uh, although hindi nga na pinakita pero sinigaw ng nanay niyang pangalan niya and a lot of um a lot of drugs fell on the floor these were prescription drugs at magtataka ko bakit um Kung bakit binibigyan lang ni Aro to eh. Uh, I don't know. Yung nanay niya. Pero, a lot of drugs are on the floor. Probably, Aro to was trying to make his mother take these drugs. Kasi, mga pampakalma ito eh. Okay? I, think they are, I think they are psychoactive drugs na prescription. Okay? Prescription to, sigurado. Because, right there, you can deduce that um that his mother has suicidal has suicidal tendencies. Okay. As later on would be shown in the episode na meron siya dito benda sa wrist. She has already tried slashing her wrists. So yeah, may suicidal tendencies ang babaeng to. And Aruto always has his hands full when it comes to his mom. Talagang 
so much as to quit school and just focus on housework while his father was his father is always dead tired from work kaya tuwing umuwi na Aruto would always say the bat's ready jump in kaya talagang um, mahirap ang sitwasyon ni Aruto so if it weren't for that gear shift we wouldn't I personally wouldn't um, get the idea of what of what episode I am up against second gear shift it's when um, Ryuhei first noticed Aruto's issues. Kasi nung, uh, naki, kasi merong, while they were investigating this, um, uh, while they were getting leads on how to take out these distributors of this, um, of this dream drug, may nakita kasing mag-ina si Aruto na, ay, kasi may bata na, ano, Pinipili mo naman ako ng PS, PlayStation. Pinipili mo ng PS. Bakit, sabi ko, bakit Pasko pa? Ay, gusto ko ngayon para may kwento ko sa mga kaibigan ko. Eh, the usual, the usual kid stuff. The usual kid stuff. Na, siyempre, kinukulit yung nanay para bilibilan siya. Nakita ni Aro to ito. And, uh, bigla siyang, well, bigla siyang biniro ni Ryuhei. Okay. You want your own PS? Go. Go, go have your mother have your mother buy it I was you know, bigla siya si bigla siya si ni pa ni ni ni, ni Aruto sa binti that confirms his suspicions kaya pala niya ginanon Aruto and these happy families because right now he doesn't have one because of the domestic life he has right now hindi niya talaga not his Nagsise, nag, naiinggit siya sa mga ganong sa mga ganong pamilya and Ryuhei quickly related to this because his domestic life was like that 10 years ago and, well Ryuhei is 16 now so he's gotten over it and well palagi ko he's fully adjusted to his new life without his brother so he's been through that before kaya siya nakaka-relate ngayon sa sitwasyon ni Aruto Okay. That's why I call this one a gear shift. Because, well, Ryohei feels he's the leader of this team. So, he's probably taking it upon himself to understand the mindset of each of his, uh, of each of his teammates. So, yun nga. Okay. He's trying to understand Aruto. Kasi, baka, kasi baka nga naman, it will affect, it will eventually affect his performance on the field. In taking out the uh, in saving these dreamers and taking out these uh, these weirds, these random weirds. Pero halata namang hindi iniisip ni Ryu he yon. Okay? He considers Arto a friend na, so he needs to help. He needs to offer his hand. Final gear ship. It's when they uh, it's when they found the dreamer, and the dreamer suddenly offered up his wish. Ayun, his wish came true. He disappeared, turns into a small dot like that. With a with something with a weird that small. Right? So this gear shift shows us that weirds come in all shapes and sizes. It's not just uh, it's not just those scary monsters or even humongous. Wow, humongous monoliths. Even as small as a dot, a weird can manifest itself. Yeah, it's proven by that gear shift. Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift. This dream drug can, uh, can, can feed on your worst nightmares or your, or your wildest dreams. Either way, if you're, if you're the one ingesting it, ikaw pa rin ang talo. You will eventually wind up either dead or saved by the knocker ups. These three gear shifts, all of them, the way I see it, yes, will play a role down the line in this anime. Especially the last one. Ngayon, alam na ng buong team that, like I said, and a while ago, weirds come in all shapes and sizes. 
alam na ng mga bida yon. Kaya dapat mag-iingat pa rin sila. Discern the field before taking action. Plotwise. Planchado. Bakit? Because while um, Aruto is showing us what his domestic life looks like, this one's happening. The, um, the chain of events that led to that guy taking that dream drug. Kasi we've all seen kasi the, he, con- he wakes up probably stressed out from the previous day. He, needs, he still needs to go to work only to be bullied by his bosses only for only for only to be only to enter that toxic environment again then when he comes out of that no woman no no girl wants to wants to go out with him ayaw makipag-date sa kanya siguro pag aakyat siya ng ligaw I'm sorry gagano na lang yung girl hindi siya hindi siya type despite being a mild-mannered guy yeah, I can I can already do I can already deduce that this is a mild mannered guy. And when he comes home, he just he just grabs he just grabs some cup noodles lang lagyan bubusan niya ng tubig o yun lang kakainin niya. Tapos wala lang siya ng TV. Pagtapos na siya kumain, matutulog na lang siya. I couldn't imagine myself with that kind of life. With that kind of that with a life that boring. Nope, not for me. Not for me. Oh my God, that treadmill of a life, and and you're the guinea pig. You're living the life of a guinea pig. Kumaga, kumaga, sasapan na lang sa treadmill, tatakpo na lang na takbong ganon, tatakpo na lang sa wheel, yung barong wheel na ganon. Yan. If you if you got a guinea pig or a hamster, yeah, you you're living the life of a hamster. Kumaga, pag tapos ka ng kumain, oh sige, putak na lang sa Puto ka na sa, sa wheel. O, oh, magpaikot ka na doon. Takbo ka na ng takbo. With no, no destination. His life got so boring, he's now resorting to this drug to make him disappear. Well, I guess he got his wish. Unfortunately. He wasn't, well, the team wasn't able to save him. He just, they just freed him from this agony. Okay. Monotony can lead to agony. That's the that's the lesson you will that's the lesson you will definitely learn from this episode. If you couldn't understand Aruto's domestic issues, you will understand what that uh, what that what that guy went through. He his life became so boring he resorted to that drug to to free him from this from this uh this this guinea pig of a life. And the plot made me understand that. Although planchado, it's still understandable. Because your uh, the episode presented two, actually presented two stories. In Aruto and to this guy, and they're happening at the same time. So they all, so they both came to a head. Siguro nung the moment that guy took that dream drug, kasi bigla na bukas ng portal eh. Hindi na nabukas ang portal. Kila Ryuhi at Aruto. Like I said a while ago, monotony can result into agony. Pace, flow, and plot, yep, they came together. They all came together for this episode. Although, planchado ang plot. Okay? Talagang, it's all a matter of presentation kasi. Especially uh, when it comes, yeah, let's go back to the plot. It's all a matter of presentation. Talagang maganda ginawa nila ito. Although, it wasn't just one plot, it's actually two. Pero, they ironed it out so well, it it just passed off as one episode. Yeah. Another great episode when it's anime. So, this I draw me the animation episode four. Yeah, deserve. Two thumbs up. I initially thought that um, this side will become another King's Raid, uh, an, an anime based on a computer game with very few deep dives, if at all. But nope, for the fourth straight episode, this anime made me deep dive. 
That's all. That's all. That's how good this anime is. Because if, if an anime makes you think, I tell you, Mahal Lifestyle, you're watching a great anime. Now, unless you have fewer brain cells than usual, you'll only find animes entertaining. You'll only go for animes with just pure that has only pure entertainment value. No deep dive invitations. No um call this. Yeah, simply no deep dive invitations. Those kinds of animes suck. Animes uh, I'll repeat what I said a while ago. If an anime makes you deep dive as often as it can, yep, you're watching a great anime. Yan ang power tip ko sa inyo. And this anime, yep, I'll say it again. For the fourth straight episode, it made me deep dive. Yeah, I can say it right now. Only four episodes in. This is a great anime. So again, decide to marry the animation episode four. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up from this anime, Mama Lifestyle. Next episode has been teasered, and hmm, gulo, right? Ang gulo. No, only the carry over to from this episode. So. Don't trust it yet. And you know the drill, Maka Lifestyle. Wait for next week and watch that episode. Para mare natin, baka ma deep dive natin ulit. It's that good again. So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, all right? Wow. <laughs> Woo! Another Another tense episode from this anime. Uh, let, let's run it down. Baji wraps up his backstory by letting Hanma give him the, uh, the official Valhalla jacket. Yun, sinuot niya kagal. Much to Takinichi's surprise. Yup. Baji is now at Valhalla. Officially. May jacket ne. Hanma now um, lets Takinichi walk away from their base, uh, from their headquarters. And has Takemichi deliver a message to Mikey. October 31, abandoned car park. Abandoned parking lot pala. Toman versus Valhalla. <laughs> wow. Hindi siya nakatulog nung gabing yun. Because primarily, that message is the least of his concerns. Ang concern niya, how is he going to break the news to Mikey? And well, it seems that he's also getting ready for Mikey's punishment. Whatever that is. This day, he starts his day by uh, well, walking to school. And whom does he um, whom does he pass by? Who's in the playground? Si Matsuno, yung yung vice captain ni Baji sa first division. Yung binugbog niya bilang initiation right sa Valhalla. Yup, same guy. And if you've seen the episode, talagang he looked like a mummy. Talagang puro benda ang mukha. <laughs> Baji literally rearranged his face that day. <laughs> Kaya, yun, yun, nagpakilala siya. I'm Matsuno. I'm, uh, I'm Baji's vice captain in the first division. So, kinusap na rin siya ni Takemichi. Yun pala, here's the real reason why why, uh, why Baji left Toman for Valhalla. He has only one name. Si Kisa Kiteta. Matagal na palang... Uh, matagal na palang walang tiwala si Baji kay Kisa Ki. Uh, ever since this... Um, this... Uh, this... Uh, this hoodlum from Mobius joined Toman. Tapos ginawa pang automatic third division captain. Talagang manghihinala si Baji. So we chose to... Um, Leave Toman and join Valhalla. Yung pala, he's going undercover. To uh, expose Kisaki kasi ang hinala niya kay Kisaki, ito talaga ang leader ng Valhalla. We all know, 
Valhalla's actual commander has no face. Even no face, no name. Kaya nga ang tawag sa Valhalla, the headless angel. Kasi I repeat, no one knows who the actual commander is. Yun nga, ang suspecha ni Baji, itong, itong demonyong itong si Kisaki. Naniwala rin si ano, naniwala naman si Takemichi. Tinanong naman ni, Ka, ni Takemichi, may, um, you have some proof na Baji suspicions check out. Sinabi ni Matsuno, yes. And, pinuntahan nila, si Osanay pala. Dating Mobius. Yung sinaksak ni Pa, yun. Same guy. Natikman ni Takemichi ang suntok nun. <laughs> yeah, if you remember, yep. I don't know if he still remembers Takemichi. It was already in front of him. So, nalaman pala ni, nalaman pala nila Matsuno Takemichi kay Osanay that everything that has, that has been happening to Toman, it's Kisaki's plan. Talagang plano lahat ni Kisaki ito. Osanay getting stabbed by Pa, yep plano ni Kisaki yun. The Battle of August 3rd were in puntik na mamatay si Draken. Yup! Plano ni Kisaki yun. And him, uh, Kisaki himself defecting to Toman at pinromote pa ni Mikey as 3rd Division Captain. Yep, obviously. Plano ni Kisaki yun. Before the question, Osanay, tinanong pa nga ni Matsuno kay Takemichi kung bakit niya sinapak na ng na basta-basta si ni Kisaki si Kisaki hindi siya basta kundi ni Michi kasi baka nga namang magulo ang timeline eh. magulo timeline final scene what? Takemichi is back in 2017 nag, uh, nagpabalik siya because he wanted to um, yeah, he wanted to to further question Draken so bumalik sila Nilalo nila ulit si Draken. Tinanong niya kay Draken. Do you still remember Valhalla? The one that has um the one whose commander we we don't know, we don't know uh we have no knowledge of. Syempre, matatandaan ni Draken 'yon, eh. number two, number 2 ng Toman 'yan eh. Sino ba talaga ang tunay na leader ng Valhalla? Sinagot ni Mikey, uh, sinagot ni Draken. Valhalla's actual leader is Mikey. Ito kasi Takemichi. Ha? Paano? It all happened now during the Blood Halloween. Kaya pala, ayan, October 31, yun sa, sa abandoned parking lot. That's where, according to Draken, that's where Mikey killed Kasutora. And after that, nag-merge ang Toman at Valhalla. So, with the, um, with the, um, that part na sinabi ni Drake na si Mikey ang talagang leader ng Valhalla, medyo hindi clear na. But what was clear was this. Nagkaroon ng merger between Toman and Valhalla. Looks like both sides took casualties. Kaya pala tinawag na Blood Halloween. Kaya siguro, ganon. Kaya nagkaroon ng um, merge. Kaya nag-merge ang Valhalla at saka Toman. With Valhalla as the parent organization. Bo? Bo class? Talaga demonyo ito si Kisaki. Talaga demonyo ito. Overall, it's another fucking good episode from this anime. Galing! Whew! That was another 10 20 minutes. Uh, at least, at least 20 minutes of um, absolutely tense situations. Pace! I don't know if you can call it slow kasi uh, so, yung katapusan ng backstory ni, ni Baji, tense na. Yung yung pagkakadalong nila Matsuno Takinichi kay Osanai, and yung yung pagka-expose niya kay Kisaki yung yung buong kwento that's practically the whole story for now it's tense also 
And of course, the final scene nung inamin ni Draken na ang talagang leader ng Valhalla ay si Mikey. That was also tense. And, well, let's deep dive a bit into that. Draken is on death row. So, he will have, he has no personal gain if he's going to lie at this point. Kaya, uh, at saka, kaibigan, tinuturing naman niyang kaibigan si Takemichi. So, why should he lie to Takemichi? I think from here on in, he's going to tell all to Takemichi. Gabi. And the pacing made me realize that. 20 minutes of tense moments. Consider the pace fast. <laughs> but, fast in a way that it'll make us understand as to how this anime will possibly end. As to how Takimichi will rise up the ranks at Toman. Kasi yun ang goal niya. He even told it to Mikey Space in one scene of this episode. I am going to be the leader of Toman. Sinabi niya kay Mikey yun ng harap-harapan. Nandun din si Draken. Okay? Nasa likod niya si Matsuno. Kasi dinalo nila yung yung libingan ng kuya ni Mikey. Na, yung napatay ni Kasutora. Yup. Dinalo ni Mikey yun. Sinama ka nila. Right there and then, or right after, right after that, sinabi ni Takimichi sa mukha ni Mikey, I'm going to be the leader of Toman. Pinagkibit balikat lang ni Mikey. Mikey considers Takimichi his friend, so, at least, well, at least, inaamin naman, inaamin naman ni Takimichi that he's also after Mikey's position as the commander of Toman. So, for for Mikey, that's an honorable way to do. That's the honorable way to go. Ganon, uh, ganon ang ganon ang samahan nila. Ganon ang samahan nila. So yeah, the pace also made me realize that. Bottom line, the pace of this episode is impeccable. Wow, it. The pace was so good. Yep, it made me deep dive. It made me deep dive. Flow naman. First gear shift was during the opening scene. Pinasabi ni Hanma kay Takemichi na sabihin kay Mikey, October 31, abandoned parking lot. Magsasago pa ang, ang Toman at Valhalla. If it weren't for that gear shift, Mikey could have, uh, yeah, Mikey could have actually killed Takimichi. Okay? Kasi, he actually delivered a message from Valhalla. So, Mikey is assuming that nakarating si Takimichi sa pugad mismo ng Valhalla. And he actually saw Baji um, get initiated into Valhalla. So, yeah, he's, he's already assuming that. Kanya siguro, um, and he's also assuming that, he's also assuming Takemichi that uh, Baji is beyond saving. He's probably forgiven um, Takemichi for not accomplishing his mission. Instead, ang kasama niya, kasama, kasama ng Takemichi, si Matsuno. If it weren't for that gear shift, God knows, God knows what Mikey can do to, to Takemichi. Second gear shift is when, well, yun nga, uh, nung dinalo nila Matsuno Takemichi, si Osanai. And basically, Osanai told all about Kisaki's um, grand plan. Akala niya siguro, Kaya niya siguro, snot nose little brat lang itong si Kisaki nung una niya nakilala ito. Nope. Siya na mismo nagsabi. Si Osanay na mismo nagsabi. He is bad news. Talaga demonyo. Okay. Nung palang pagkikita nilang dalawa ni Kisaki, talaga demonyo na ang utak nito. <laughs> wow. Final gear shift is of course uh, when when um, 
Pakinichi visited Draken again. Ayun, sinabi na ni Draken, the actual leader of Valhalla is Mikey. Valhalla was formed for Mikey. And he did not realize it sooner. Wow. Now, we can deep dive into that all day, pero mauubusan tayo ng... Baka, it would take the entire... This entire digest to... <laughs> To, to 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 get all the deep dives in this particular episode alone baka mabusa ng mabusa ng mabusa ng view time ang mga ibang uh, ang mga ibang reviews ko so we're going we're going to leave it to that okay now if you want to if you have already if you already have deep dives as to that matter there's the comment section all right there's the comment section. Leave your comments. Leave your deep dives there. Oh, I really want to know. Why I call it a gear shift? Simple. Like uh, the first two. This will play a huge role down the line in this anime. Excuse me. Ito na siguro ang tatlong pinakamatitinding gear shifts na nakita ko sa anime na to. And they're all in this episode. Grabe. Plot-wise. Yup. Malinis. Okay. Malinis pa rin ang plot. Bakit? Kasi, we are in that same continuity of Takemichi uh, on a mission to bring Baji back to Toman. But, Baji's backstory literally threw a monkey wrench in his plans. Simple lang kasi ang ano eh. Ang... Ang intent ng plot na ito. To make us focus on how Takemichi is going to break the news to Mikey. That, no, oh, Baji is beyond saving. Uh, talaga nakita niya, nakita mismo ng dalawang mata niya na he has no plans of coming back to Toman even if I, even if I, even if I, even if I let them, let them be his punching bag for one night. And, uh, he knows he know he now know, he now knows Baji's side of the story and the main reason why Baji is here because of Kasotora now sinabi rin ni Mikey during their um, their visit to uh, Sh- Sh- Shinichiro yun, yun ang pangalan ng kuya ni Mikey si Shinichiro sinabi mismo ni Mikey dito that he will never forgive Kasotora for killing his brother. Si Baji napatawad na niya. Sinabi mismo ni Mikey yon. Oh. If um if the blood Halloween did happen, I wouldn't be surprised if kung talagang totoo siya sabi ni Draken na pinatay ni Mikey dito si Kasotora. I won't be surprised anymore. Mikey wouldn't find it in his heart to to forgive Kasotora. Kasi nakita niya naman sa last episode talagang Si Kasotora pumatay kay, kay Shinichiro eh. From behind, oh. Hinatawa ng boat cutter. Ang tigas nun. Hatawin ka ba naman sa ulo ng boat cutter? Wala. You, you, you'll die from blood loss. The plot was really clean. Right? Talagang it made me focus on on how Takemichi will wrap his mission up. Siguro nasabi rin niya na I was there in Valhalla's base because Kasotora invited me. I don't know. Siguro, it, it, siguro itong nasa utak no ni Takemichi. Hindi ko alam kung paano ako nakilala ni, ni Kasotora. Probably because of Baji. Because, well, <laughs> you know, during the, during the uh, ceremony for Kisaki, yeah. Sinapak din siya ni Baji. <laughs> At talagang kilala kilala siya ni Baji. Takemichi is the literal punching bag of this anime. <laughs> but he is the main protag. Kawawa talaga si Takemichi rin. But, uh, but we all love him, okay? We, we've grown to love this. We've grown to love this character. Again, the plot was so clean, it will make you deep dive into it even more. On what happened in between scenes and what can happen in future episodes. That's how clean the plot is. It leaves, uh, it leaves gaps 
it leaves gaps for basically the viewers to um to deep dive into to peek into ganyan ka ganyan kalinis yung plot na yan okay lang kung mag-leave ka ng mag-leave ka ng gap eh you, you will need to you will need to um, make the viewer immerse into the immerse into the episode ganito yon ganito yon exact pace flow and plot I nearly wasn't able to distinguish one from the other sa episode na to. Ganon kaganda. That's how great this episode is. So, Tokyo Revengers episode 17. Isip, isip pa. <sighs> oh. Two thumbs up! This anime has yet to receive uh, rating lower than the two thumbs up from me. It's on one of the most impressive um, rating streaks I have seen ever since I started this whole thing. Bira talagang anime na talagang all throughout two thumbs up. Tokyo Revengers is on pace to becoming that to becoming one of those animes. The other one was uh, I think. Mm. Moriarty the Patriot Season 2 yeah. That's uh Kasi yung Season 1 nun I think I gave One episode uh, The one thumb up Pero Hindi Wala Seasons 1 and 2 ng Moriarty Yeah No rating lower than 2 thumbs up So that was the first uh, Anime that I have reviewed Na perfect ang, Na perfect record so, Tokyo Revengers right now is on pace to becoming. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure anymore. Becoming at least the second to achieve the perfect record. Tagam, this anime continues to impress me. Story-wise, and well, I gave I. And animation-wise, wala namang non-factor sa akin yun. Talagang I base an anime's. Um, greatness on its storyline. Tokyo Avengers is one of them. Kaya hanggang ngayon, two thumbs up pa rin ang nakukuha sa aking rating nito. It's that fucking good. It's a whole new take on Isekai and it also opens our eyes as to how complicated gang politics can be. Hmm. Deep dive. So again, Tokyo Revengers episode 17 Two thumbs up Another two thumbs up for Tokyo Revengers manga lifestyle So in typical Revengers fashion No teasers Hmm Talagang effective yung pag, pag po-promote nila na susunod na, na susunod na episode no? Wala sa na teaser tungkol dito So It's our job oh, I guess well, I guess most of you don't know the drill yet. Here's how the drill works. You wait for next week and watch that episode. Para ma-deep dive natin naman ng maigi. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Alright? Whoa! Woo! Sa wakas! Nangyari na ang gusto kong mangyari sa 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 particular Yu-Gi-Oh series na to. A summon mechanic has finally been introduced. Okay, and I'm not talking about the maximum summon. This is an OG summoning mechanic. Dates back to the days of Duel Monsters. I am talking none other than the Fusion Summon. Yes. Basically, what does this mean? Uh, to um, to players of the card game like me, okay? much much more to uh, to to the actual rush duel format. But uh, simply na perception ko jan mga lifestyle. It now legitimizes the extra deck for rush duels. Let's run the story down a little bit. So you has challenged to a duel, and look who steps up. See si Yuga. Now. Well, the basically the duel went back and forth. Yuga was able to summon his maximum monster. 
alam natin lahat na uh, ang maximum summon is exclusive to the Rush Duel. So, hindi siya pwedeng gamitin sa sa OCG, sa TCG. Yo, uh, uh, in response, he fusion summons his ace. He only needed was one warrior and one machine. Uh, I think on the field. So, eto pala yung card na ipinagmamalaki ni Yuwo na perfectly legal for Rush Duels and pinakamalakas na card ngayon sa in, well, in the siblings' possession. His brother Yuro doesn't know of this. Eh, nanunod din si Yuro eh. Tinatanong nga siya nila, nila Mimi eh. May, may alam ka ba rito? Uh, Yuro honestly said, nope. We have no idea he has this card. Oh, final scene. What? Yuo pulls the rug from under Yuga. He beats him. Eh, marunong di ba na mag-mind games itong si Yuo? Ayun. He repeatedly said the word fusion until the episode ended. Wow. Okay, uh, that's a bit disturbing. <laughs> Overall, uh, eh, titiretso ko na. It's a fucking good episode. It's about time. The extra deck has been utilized in this ano, uh, in in sevens. Pace from the get go, mabilis na. Okay, from the get go. Lalo bumilis ito nung nilabas ni uh, nung nilabas ni Yuga yung kanyang maximum monster. Of course, eh, it's a maximum summon. So, talagang exciting pag uh, when someone when someone performs a maximum summon. Whether it be uh, whether it be anybody, if a duel happens in a Yu-Gi-Oh episode, the pace quickens. Ganito nga nila nangyari. and rightfully so, because not only will, will will they showcase a back and forth duel, they will also reintroduce an OG summoning mechanic. I never thought it would be the fusion summon first for uh, for sevens. To tell you honestly, kaya siguro kung kung, kung, kung binagana ng konti ang pace dito, wala makaka-appreciate sa pagbabalik ng, ng, ng Fusion Summon sa, sa isang Yu-Gi-Oh! series. The last time we saw someone perform a Fusion Summon sa Brain Spa, si Ai. His Addict Nister deck, ano na yun eh? Uh, kumbaga, uh, it can pull off a variety of summons, not just Link, but also Fusion Synchro and Ixis. Kaya, wow, yeah. it's been siguro two years, okay? Two years since we uh, since, since we saw some since we saw someone do uh, of any summoning mechanic from the extra deck. Basically, <laughs> ganon na katagal. Kaya uh, ganon na lang yung pananabik ko when you pulled off his version of the fusion summon. Kaya. Okay na okay ang pace ng episode na to. Flow naman! First gear shift was, of course, when you will challenge, when announced that he's up for a duel. And Yuga accepted his challenge. Excuse me. It's a no-brainer. Kung hindi naghamon si Yuwo, you will, we wouldn't have this kind of a duel. Second gear shift is when, what? Well, Yuga uh, summon this maximum monster. I call it a gear shift. Kasi, this, I think this problem, this probably motivated Yuo to use his secret card. Ayun nga, fusion, ang pangalan. Bakit di pa ginawang polymerization eh? The only thing we know about it is, is that it can, per, it can help you perform a fusion summon. Pero, hindi naman polymerization ang pangalan ng card na to eh. Fusion talaga. What's the difference? Baka meron bang ibang effect nito na na what na hindi pa natin alam or he, hindi he, walang hindi nagkaroon ng chance si Yuo na gamitin that second gear shift made me deep dive into that uh, maybe maybe speculate on that final gear shift is of course when he performed the fusion summon for the very first time in this show seven history has been made and the one who performed the fusion summon wasn't any of the lead characters. It wasn't any, wasn't any, wasn't any of the good guys, but one of the villains. I call this gear shift because it justifies uh, the use of the extra deck 
okay? If you're um, if you're a real life Yu-Gi-Oh card gamer like me, it justifies its use. Because sinabi na ng anime, oh, pwede kang gumamit ng extra decks sa Rush Duel. But uh, if you're uh, from the anime's from the anime's point of view, naman, it looks like looks like the villains have won up the heroes. Okay, now uh, the score is three two. Okay, because of Yuo's win. And what you can say it's um rather underhanded, probably more underhanded than what Neil did against Yuga. Ever since the start of season two, he has been boasting about this card he's making. Elang nadalaman niya, nalaman niya through the helmet na this is perfectly legal in rush duels. Po, ito pala yung tinatago niyang card. Ito pala yung pinagmamalaki niyang uh, secret card. Hmm. Uh, what's so special? <laughs> For me, it's just uh, you just needed to to do a fusion summon. Meron pa bang ibang meron pa bang iba, ibang effect ng card na to? Hmm, we don't know, but because of, uh, that's the reason why I called it the gear shift because it may be speculate again. These three gear shifts, especially the last two, will play a role in future episodes of this anime. Because well, it's like the anime is telling us that hello, the fusion summon is back. Plot-wise, Malinis. This is one thing about uh, about uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh series. Sevens is no exception. When there's a duel, the plot is normally clean. Because eh, um, you're you're following one continuity, which is the duel, and it also helps you understand the aftermath. The, the, the final scene it makes uh, it helps you understand the final scene better. Kaya malinis ang plot. You know, you know, ko <laughs> about the plot. Pace, flow, and plot. Yep, they came together for this episode. Like I said a while ago, mga kalay style. The fusion summon is back. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode fifty-eight. You should Oh, two thumbs up! Wow! Excuse me. Napainom ako ng tubig ng dalawang beses in just one review. That, that's how excited I am with this episode. Because, well, I bet you guys, anyone who is, um, who's into rush duels right now, wala gumagamit ng extra deck. But, probably after seeing this episode, yeah, they might use it na. They might incorporate an extra deck now into their, uh, into their, into into what they're using, into what they're using in matches. Probably uh, for me, it's long overdue. Because the real life rules of rush duel are clear. You can use an extra deck. You can incorporate um, fusion, synchro, and exis. Now. Probably you can you can also use pendulum, pero you can't summon them anymore from the extra deck kapag uh, kapag na face up na sila. If they're already face up on the extra deck, you can't summon them anymore. Dahil <laughs> wala namang extra monsters doon sa rush duels eh. So saan sila pupunta? You know what I'm saying? Unless there's a card effect that that makes you banish cards from extra deck makes you banish cards from the extra deck no matter if it's face up or face down then uh, you use cards like DDR return from the different dimension mga to, to summon them to the field from being banished marami pang pasigot-sigot power tip para sa inyo if you plan to take up the Yu-Gi-Oh card game okay especially uh Rush Duel format muna kayo. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 58. Good job. Next episode has been teasered, pero 
No yoga? I couldn't imagine um, an episode of Sevens without him. But anyway, uh, we, we should trust him. You know the drill. Wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, okay? This is another great backstory episode from this anime season. It is simply a retelling of one uh, one of the cases Siesta and Kimi handled uh, probably during her probably during her final days. They actually went up against the the supreme leader of space. The uh, well, you can call it their arch enemy. See hell. Hell looks like a uh, looks like a regular high school girl, but don't let her looks deceive you. She is the supreme leader of one of the most vile organizations in this anime. Okay? The arch enemy of si both Siesta and Kimi. Imagine, she mismo pumunta sa isang tao, yung tao niya werewolf, only to get his heart. Yung heart pala niyang sinasabi, e isa pa lang jewel yun. Kanyang kalaki. Oh, pinadukot niya si Kimi. And, and she is actually asking Kimi to join her. Tantara niya sinasabi kay Kimi na itakwil na niya si Siesta. But, nope. Kimi wouldn't budge. And, well, ito namang, ito namang, ito namang hell na to. Isang malaking kagagahan naman yung ginawa niya. She revealed her well, final solution to the world. Like it came out of an event, out of, a, uh, of an episode of Evangelion. Okay? Those gruesome monsters. Yep. She has one which uh, exhales very toxic breath. It's dangerous to humans. It can, well, it even has a chance of biting your head off. So, well, Hindi naman kabalo si Kimi. Final scene, Kimi showed to hell that he's finally taken the cuffs off. Kasi meron para siyang skeleton kina na nakatakot dito sa sa manggas niya. And he's wearing a business suit, okay? Ang init. Pero, eventually, Siesta rescues him with a, uh, wow, I, <laughs> I didn't know Siesta was, was, was this well equipped for anything she even has her own her own robot her own uh, what you call this parang ano eh para has her own mecha outrageous overall it's a fucking good episode pace the first third of the episode no they were they were relaxing on the beach and wow alright Siesta showed off her beach bod. Wow. Kasi ito si Siesta, mukhang bata. Hindi mo akalaing meron na siyang anak na 18 years old. Yep. Hot mama pala itong si Siesta. And well, mukhang natitimon na lang sa kanya si Kimi. Looking at Siesta's opais. Umila na mga high school teenager niya. But, the, from uh, the later two thirds of the episode, yeah, it becomes tense because they were already handling a case. The case they called Cerberus. Ito yung pinatay ni, ni Hel na tauhan para lang niya makuha yung puso. For every diabolical organization, there is always a diabolical leader. Hell is no exception. The pacing made me realize that. Okay. Proof that uh, this episode is well paced and yep, it's got the pacing of a detective anime. Lalo si Siesta ngayon ang, ang focus ng storya for this episode at least. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift is when they um, investigated this dead body. Well, actually, it's the body of a dead priest na butas yung butas yung chest cavity wala na yung puso 
and well, Kimmy finds it gross. He couldn't stand the smell. Eh, sko. Nakatagpo pa ba naman ng ganong, ganong klaseng pangkay? Talagang aakdas ang amoy nun. I really couldn't imagine what Kimmy was smelling in that scene. Wow. Second gear shift is when they were this close to apprehending Cerberus. Shapeshifter pala ang mokong na to. It even it even um, assumed the form of char. Muntik na kanyang maloko si Kimmy dito. Nakalata lang ni Kimmy na hindi ito si Char is when well, sinabi ni Char na Siesta wouldn't like uh, wouldn't like uh, his way of uh, his way of thinking something to that effect something to that effect kasi imbis na tawagin niyang mama si Siesta Siesta ang tinawag niya well, doon pala well, doon pala nakalata ni Kimmy na hindi ito si Char It's Cerberus. He even went to great lengths as to uh, as to shape shift into a boy. Para niya mahalat mahalat ng tumatakas. Well, both Siesta and Kimi know that that is still Cerberus. He hasn't left the room. They were that close to to catching him. Enter hell. Ayon. Pinatay niya sarili niya tawhan in front of in front of Kimi and Siesta. Ayun, nagpakilala na siya. Well, actually, kilala na siya ni Siesta. This is Spes's supreme leader, sinabi niya kay Kimi. Pero pinagtatakang ko nun, bakit si Kimi lang ang kinidnap ni... ni Hell? At hindi si Siesta? Just because, um... Kimi is a high schooler? Maybe it's because she sees Kimmy as the as an even bigger threat than than his employer. Hmm, deep dive yon. Pwede rin. Sometimes the psychic can be more dangerous than the, than the hero. Yep, Kimmy has probably proven that in this episode in this gear shift. Now, final gear shift is when. Of course, the time when Kimmy, uh, well, Kimmy freed himself. Then at the same time, yon Siesta comes in to rescue him. Well, Siesta is well equipped, <laughs> but I never knew she was that well equipped. Bisari di pa lang combat robot to, walang yah. Simply detective lang sa. Para sa nakakolit to. It's a rather outrageous ending to this episode, but. I think we're gonna have our answers in the next episode. But this gear shift proves that Shesta has shown us why she is the world's greatest detective. She is this anime's version of Batman. Mala mala Batman pala ang, ang mga gadgets dito eh. Pero mapapabilib ka pa rin kay Shesta. She's well prepared for anything. That's why she is the world's greatest detective. These three gear shifts have probably played a role already in this anime since we were watching a backstory episode but the one that will probably play a role still in this anime was I think um, the second one Bakit? because even after Siesta's death Spes is still around Kinon from ni Bangyon when uh, during I think yeah episode 2 nung nakita sila ni Nikimi pero nakakulong na si Bang nun. I'm very sure that hell is still around we now know through this gear shift of how diabolical this teenage looking terrorist leader is mapapalaban ngayon si Kimi rito now that Siesta is gone in case Spes shows its ugly head again hell will will be at the forefront talagang mauna kagad si hell dito I think Spes now knows that Siesta is dead and Kimmy is still alive. Kimmy alone poses a threat to Spes. Kaya, that's the gear shift I know deep in my heart that will still play a role in this anime. The more we deep dive. Plot-wise, well, for a backstory episode, malinis ang plot. Because it 
entirely focused on that. This was probably the last case, uh, the last case Jesta and Kimi handled as a team. Uh, talagang, I, I have a good feeling that uh, that the plot here will show us in future episodes as to how Siesta died. I think right now I'm having a pretty good idea that that in that it involved this case. The plot made me uh, realize that. Kasi ganun kanin is a plot. It totally made me focus on the case they were handling. It's typical of a detective anime. Yung ganito kanin is the plot. Kasi may build up and of course the, uh, the slam bang final scene. Putol na eh. Hindi pa tapos yun. Obviously. So, pace, flow, and plot all three of them came together for this episode. Giving us another fucking great one from this anime. So, the detective is already dead. Episode 5. What the hell happened? Technical difficulties are part of the uh, a part of the content creation process. So, I'll let that slide. But anyway, buti na natapos na natin yung review proper and we've already given our rating. Basta. I'm getting excited for for the next episode particularly because we will probably we will now probably know how Siesta died. I got that really good feeling it involved this case and I'm also getting a good idea that Kimi saw Siesta die at the hands of Spes. You know if I were Kimi I would use whatever 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 I've learned from Siesta and dedicate my life to taking down this organization and not uh, not return to a normal high school life like like what he did here in the anime that is if I were Kimi you know with gaining those superior detective skills oh yeah magtago na kayo spes kahit sa kahit sa manglunga kayo magtago aabutin ko pa aabutan ko pa rin kayo mata nyo lang awalang latay sa akin that would be my mindset if I were Kimi at all. Um, Kimmy showed some weakness when he decided to um, to just live a normal life after um, his partnership with with Siesta came to a really disturbing end. Uh, personally, I am glad that Kimmy is back in the detective business. Because sayang naman, he has gained all those uh, detective skills. That was hindi niya gagamitin. And now that he's he has his own team, no matter how no in any way you see it from any angle, Kimi now has his own detective team. Sinagisa mm, no, I forgot I forgot the name. But um oh, I forgot I already forgot the names of their uh, of, uh these partners that he has gained over over the course of this anime's run. But anyway, we are nearing the the end of the first half of this anime's run. Episode 5 now, so next week will be episode 6. I am a bit excited for that. So again, the detective is already dead. Episode 5. The, the 
get the ghetto arc pilots are, are have now seen the light as to um, as to how the Andromeda acceleration first appeared. Okay, this happened 19 years ago, and Gather Dragon still exists. Nandun sila sa pinaka nandun siya sa pinaka malalim na parte ng old laboratory ng lumang Sotome lab. Jin is uh he was explaining in the final scene actually that well Gather Dragon has already taken a life of its own and of course the life of Benke so in explain pa nga ni Professor Sotome yung multo niya that Benke should rest easy now dahil ito mga batang ito eh these are the chosen children of Gather he's talking about none other than Takuma Kamui and Baku but before that whoa what a way to take out an enemy by simply biting its fucking head off <laughs> sabi ko sa inyo eh talagang wow right they first infiltrate the um the third bulkhead by using Kirin si Kirik yung yung drill form yung drill na getter yep that's Kamui's uh that's Kamui's form that's Kamui's getter kiramid nila ayun mabilis sila na infiltrate yung final bulkhead wherein the queen is there tinatawag na niya ngayon yung mga alipo yung mga alaga niya to converge at that point but hinabol nila and they were able to head the queen off at the pass with Gather Ark himself. Ayo naghintay na yung si Ark. Naka naka sa ganon eh. And at that moment, pak tanggal ang ulo, putang inang yad. Gather Ark actually bit the head off this queen. Gather Ark looked like Ozzy Osbourne at that point, like. The, the time when Ozzy Osbourne actually bit off the head of a dove. Yeah, it, it's a moment in rock and roll history that no one will ever forget. Grabe, he, Ark went Ozzy Osbourne on the queen. Bit its fucking head off. Oh, ang brutal. Grabe. They had to do this quickly because, because of Kamui. Because in, uh, in the next 30 seconds, Um, Jin will order the, the gates of hell to be opened because that point in the old laboratory they call it the cauldron of hell nandun mismo ang mga getter rays so they were able to get out uh, kasi mas mabilis gumalaw si Kirin ah, si Kirik mas mabilis siyang gumalaw so they were able to get out of there and wow the getter rays actually exterminated all of these bugs And at the same time, it was actually controlling that porthole na pinag na pinagmulan ng 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 raid na to, ng kalabang ito. Excuse me. Wow, probably the most exciting episode I've ever reviewed. Grabe. Vintage gonna guy, ang ang violence. Final scene. Well, I've already mentioned the final scene, so I'm gonna re- I'm, I'm going to mention it again, just for uh, just for formality's sake. Jin explains to the to the to the arc pilots that what they saw was exactly what happened 19 years ago. Well, they they lost Benke. Uh, that time kasi siya ang nag, siya ang nag-ooperate kay Gather Dragon noon and it and it wasn't Ryoma so talagang hindi siya sanay the only thing he could do then was was to activate Gather Beam para para ma, mapatay lahat ng bugs na to it was the Andromeda Acceleration's first appearance talaga nahirapan sila noon nahirapan sila kasi so much as to lose a team member yun nga si Ben K He got he, he got quickly he he was quickly absorbed by the gather race yeah um starting yeah which meant his demise his untimely demise what was this what we saw um 
ever but seen a button looks like the dinosaur empire is already making is already uh waiting for the next chance they get at at uh taking over the world long indication ito. Right? it's part of the final scene overall it's a fucking good episode wow wow episodes I have ever seen from this franchise. Talagang like, brutal. Brutal pumatay ang Gator, ang ang Gator arc. Brutal pumatay. Pace. Wow. Ever ever since the get go, it's been action packed. Talagang like, fast ang pace ng episode na to. And it rather slowed down in during uh during the final part of the final scene <laughs> don lang nagbagal ito wow hey, but hey uh, you're up against um well, the getters are up against probably the the biggest threat to mankind at least in their at least in their universe the andromeda stellaration you can now classify them above the dinosaur empire right these are scary they're fucking scary and what more way to retaliate than with gather gather arc i got no complaints for the pacing of this episode talagang nakakabog ang 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 pacing ng episode na to wow flow naman well, first gear shift here is uh, when Jin announces his plan of using the culture of hell to completely take out these bugs. Sinabi niya sa get sa arc sa arc team na kailangan yung mapatay ang queen para lalong para lalong mag disarray ang mga bugs na to because well there's a queen and it needs to be taken out but you have to do that within 30 seconds. He has a full understanding of what might happen when Kamui is exposed to this Gator race. Kasi half Saurian siya. Kung pure human siya, uh, wala masyadong effect. But he is half Saurian. So he will feel the effects of this Gator race. Kaya nga nung une, the Dinosaur Empire wanted to destroy this Gator race. Because it's dangerous for them. The Gator race are are the Saurians is uranium yeah, kasi we all know uranium is dangerous for humans kasi once you once you get exposed to uranium you you can die within hours okay, you can die within hours eh gan, ganon ganon din ang effect ng gather race sa mga Saurian that's why the dinosaur empire tried so hard to to destroy gather to destroy the source of these gather rays but the humans said nope we need them to stop you so karon din ang effect nito sa andromeda acceleration that's why uh this new enemy wants get the race destroyed as well because they come from the future and they think they feel that gather rays should be destroyed that's the deep dive behind um Kamui's situation at this point in the episode final gear shift is when well <sighs> the way gather arc took out that queen brutal <sighs> 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 Gather Arc actually bit that queen's head off. It went Aussie Osborne actually. <sighs> Brutal na mega itong itong Gather Arc na to. It reminds me a lot of Masin Kaiser. Gather Arc is this franchise's Masin Kaiser, and that gearship proved it. 
it's that brutal now this particular gear ship has gone a guy written all over it when it comes to uh, violence in anime both manga and anime yep gone guy has his own stamp on it both gear shifts that i saw in this episode will play a role down the line in this anime as to how the getter pilot as how the arc pilots will will deal with the andromeda acceleration yep they will show no mercy with the andromeda acceleration proven yan in this episode now I'm going to be honest with you, Maka Lifestyle. I did not count the final scene as a gear shift. Kasi, it's just a pure explanation scene for me. Although, pinakita doon na, well, the dinosaur empire is ready and waiting for for it to strike. Siguro, sasamantalin na ni pagkakataon. Then, papasok sila. I don't know what they're well no one knows what their intentions are right now but it's obvious that's the dinosaur empire pace flow and plot yep I almost did not distinguish one from the other that's how fucking good this episode is so get the robo arc episode 5 remember uh, Mazinger Edition see the impact in Ghetto Robo Arc that level of violence is here if you ask me if, if I'm enjoying uh, 
reviewing this anime. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I am so enjoying. I'm so enjoying it. So again, get the Robo Arc episode 5. Deserves another mic drop. episode has been decent. Hmm. It's a strong title. So, um, we can expect a strong, another strong episode from, from this Gatorobo series. But, don't keep your hopes up yet, mga Kalaista. So, while you're at it, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Wow. Okay. Medyo kilig. It's not the uh, not the romantic type of kilig, but a um uh what's call this? A family type of kilig because Viola, you still remember Viola, mga ka lifestyle, yung bunsong kapatid ng Duke, eh she did not just visit uh, visit her brother once, but technically three times in this episode. It's obvious now that uh, Viola is uh, Viola misses her brought misses her kuya so much. Because the Duke is the firstborn child of the Duchess. Uh, of course, shanta kapag mana. Once her once their mother is gone, the Duke now now takes her place. Talaga legitimate Duke nasa. Pero with this curse. The Duke is slowly being disowned by their own mother. So, you can't blame Viola for visiting her brother that often. Talagang pinagtaboy na siya na sarili nilang ina. She actually uh, does something to the household that um, initially the Duke was against. To teach Alice the finer points of social graces. She calls it the Viola Method. I mean, ano, ano ka? Feeling ano siya? Feeling image consultant siya. Okay? But, wag nyo, the Viola method actually works. Alice is actually using it on the Duke. <laughs> Magtakin nyo. And, uh, while they were, while they were, uh, while she was teaching the Duke skating, si Alice, a, they got another, uh, they got another visitor. Si Zane. Ito yung male companion ni Kaf. Zane turns into a white crow. Una nga, nag, 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 nagtaka pa nga duke. Eh. Ano to? Nag, nagsasarit ang uhak? <laughs> Ayun pala, si Zane pala yun. And, wow, he is enamored with Alice. We all know Alice. She only has eyes for the Duke. Yeah. Dinidead man lang. Dinidead man lang ni Alice to. All of a sudden, from out of Alice's boobs, <laughs> comes out cough. Ito ba na yung sinalba, sinalba a while ago ni Alice na parang malit na paniki raw. Hindi niya, hindi niya naikwento agad kay Duke na cough is back. Okay? So, Kaf and Zane were reunited. Out of uh, of all places, the lake, the frozen lake. <laughs> Total, nandito na sila, sila Zane at Kaf. They help Alice teach the Duke how to skate, how to ice skate. Wala, talagang bano sa ice skating yung Duke. Nagmuasang tangarito, okay? Nagmuasang engot, okay? Nagmuasang engot talaga ang Duke dito. Final scene. Pop, tatingin ko. Na umisto kwa si Viola. I think she ran away from from the main mansion because we all know she has a crush on Rob, the butler. Tandaan <laughs> nun. She has a liking for older men, alright? They can call her a panther. Okay, panther ang tawag sa mga ganyan eh. Ang nadatnan niya yung bahay ni Alice. So, 
pina ano muna siya ni Alice no kasi talagang malamig ang talagang it was it was snowing it was snowing doon niya doon niya muna pinatulog si Viola and thankful si Viola and she had a wish that na well she sort of had another secret aside from her crush on Rob sinabi niya yung sikreto niya kay Alice that I wish sabi niya I wish I had a I had an older sister. Eh, siguro sister figure niya si Alice. Eh, well, ayun nga kina bukasan in the post in no well, in the eventual post credit nakita sila ng Duke at tinatanong pa ng Duke ano yung mga napag-usapan nila. Sabi ni nila Viola at Alice. Ano ba 'yung sasabihin sa iyo? <laughs> o nga naman Duke. O nga naman. Girl talk you ni pakikinig naman mo. Hello. That's a gentlemanly of you. So, overall, it's a damn good episode. Aside from Alice's usual sexual, sexual harassing ways, eh, mga natutunan tayo rito mga ka-lifestyle. Pace pa lang. If you've seen the episode, may mukhang mababagalan kayo. But, it's okay. It's a romance anime and it's may hollow supernatural tones because it involves curses, it involves witches, And it involves well, basically, uh, isolation. Okay, which isolation draws draws the supernatural. Maganda ang pacing niya. If the pace were a little bit faster, hindi natin ma appreciate yung family friendly tone ng episode nato. Because in one scene, they were baking bread. Eh, isinabit pa na Duke si Viola. Sabi niya, oh Rob, kunin mo tong kapatid ko. Ayan, mag, 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 magtulong kayo dyan sa pag-need, sa pag-need ng bread. Kami naman ni Alice dito. Kami magluluto. <laughs> Bali wala ang viola method kay Rob kasi hindi niya magamit dito. He, she is totally frozen. No pun intended. When she's in front of Rob. So, ito <laughs> talagang, talagang sinamantala ng Duke yung yung crush ng kapatid niya sa butler niya. The Duke acted like a real big brother here. Any big brother would do that. Oh, I've, 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 done it se- I've done it several times already with my sister. Okay? Although, although she's autistic. Okay? It's, it's fun. It's fun. The pace will make you realize that na may family-friendly tone ang episode na to. Flow naman. Well, first gear ship there was the kitchen scene. Kasi, Viola visited her brother again. Okay? It was the first time in this episode na dinalo niya kuya niya. And, ayun, sinet up siya ng kuya niya kay Rob. Kung, uh, you know, in, in the baking chores. And like I said a while ago, inassign ni, inassign ng Duke si Rob kay Viola. Tulungan sila sa baking. Tapos silang dalawa ni Alice naman sa cooking. I think they were cooking stew yata or soup. Basta ganun eh. Merong nasa kawali si ano eh. Nasa kawali ang Duke. He's the one he's the one frying. He's, I think he's the one pan frying these uh, vegetables pa ng ano eh. I think it's Ewan ko ah. I'm just speculating. I think it's Alice's recipe. Nagpapatunong si Alice sa kanya. I call it a gear shift because it's empowering. Right here. It's a family. Get what I'm saying, mga ka-lifestyle? Kahit mga kasambahay nyo yan, okay, kung may kasambahay kayo, parte na ng pamilya nyo yan, automatically. This is what this gearship is imparting to us. Treat them as family. Yun lang yan. Second gearship. Well, when the Duke met Zane, that's a gearship. Because, probably, kung hindi sineryoso ng Duke yung itong itong uwak itong puting uwak na to hindi mapapakilala ito eh and eventually ayun nakita nga ni Alice na Cuff needed help kaya pala kaya pala umalis sa agad dun sa ano kasi talaga nalalamigan na and she really need to to find Zane right away eh I think she got caught up in the snow mabuti na lang nakita siya ni Alice so <laughs> and of all places dun, dun siya nilagay si Alice sa sa gitna ng sa gitna ng kanyang opais 
doon daw siya magpaisit. <laughs> oh my God! Sabi nga ni Kaf, that was the first time someone someone talked me into their boobs. <laughs> Ang laki! Ang laki ba naman ang kargad? <laughs> okay, why did I call it the gear shift? Kasi, it just goes to show you that what comes around, ano uh, what goes around comes around. Mm. So, Kof and Zane were able to were able to see each other again through the Duke and Alice. Eventually, they've gained another they've gained another friend in Zane. Although, mukhang, yeah, mukhang, mukhang, mukhang may kakumpitensya ang duke dito ha. Eh, mukhang, eh, mukhang type na type din niya si Alice eh. Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? Final gear shift is when Viola told uh, Alice that she wished she had an older sister. Here's why I call it the gear shift. Viola explained it fully for me. Kasi, siya lang ang nag-iisang anak na babae. Bunso pa. Yung dalawang nauna sa kanya, yung nauna sa kanyang ipanganak na dalawa, pala yung lalaki. Of course, the Duke. And yung isa pang, yung isa pa, na magiging tagapagmana if, if their mother totally disowns the Duke. Okay? Next in line yun. Yung atensyon kasi ng nani nila, napunta doon sa dalawa niyang kapatid na, na lalaki. Sa, dal- sa kanyang dalawang kuya. So, and all her mother tells her to do is to study. Go to your room. Tipo, go to your room. Study something there. Ganun lang. So, wala siyang karamay. Because, she doesn't have an older sister. So, yun, yun yung, siguro, natupad yung wish niya when nagbanding sila ni Alice. That's why I call it the gear shift. No. You can call it um you can call it an empowering gear shift, the last one. Bakit? You basically see how um how women bond, how women um uh, tell each other's problems. And we, uh, if you're a, if you're a guy, if you're a straight guy, we straight guys should uh, should respect that. Okay? Ito ba naman? Ito, ito namang si Duke eh. Tatanong yung barangang kung ano, ano pinag-usapan ng dalawang babae. Hello! Come on, Duke! You're a noble! That's ungentlemanly! Okay. <laughs> That's ungentlemanly! You don't ask such a question to um to two ladies who have just become friends. Ayaw ba ng Duke yun? Abay, bonding na sila ng, ng taong mahal niya at ng kapatid niya. That's beautiful to see. The Duke should not be this dense, for God's sake. Mm. That's a deep dive. See? That's what gear shifts do. They make you deep dive. Kaya nga, kaya nga gear shift ang tawag ko eh. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, all of them, will play a role down the line in this anime. Yan na nakikita es- no. Special mention ko yung second. Because, kung napatlo yung episode niyo, may sinabi si Zane that sa sa Duke that if you want, uh, if you really want your curse to be broken, you should attend the witch's Sabbath. Pag may lang, pag may mangyayari sa you don, wag ka magalala. We have your back. Sinabi ni sinabi ni la Zane at ane um, sinigunda sa ni Kaf don. So Zane and Kaf are now sure that they, they, really, they, they really want to help the Duke out for his kindness. But he has to attend the witch's Sabbath para malaman niya kung, kung sino sa mga witches na yon ang naglagay sa kanya ng sumpang to. And if anything goes wrong, Zane and Kaf are there to watch his back. To, uh, they are there to have his back. So the Duke has nothing to worry about. He has two He has two great allies here. Okay, mo, eh, mukhang malakas na witch din itong si Zane. He has the ability to turn himself, turn himself into an animal. Okay, uh, the, baka, baka shapeshifter pa to eh. Crow lang talagang favorite niyang hayop eh. If I were the Duke, I would, I would take their offer. 
total Hihintayin siya ng dalawa dun I would take that offer Here's his chance To To, to break this curse And um, And be a proper boyfriend to Alice Or yeah Maybe Maybe propose her right away Ask her to marry him Yeah that would be That would be a nice move After the curse is broken Oh long, long overdue <laughs> Long overdue rin yun. Now, plot-wise, I saw three episodes here in one. It's a three-in-one episode. Pero, malinis ang malinis yung plot. Bakit? They were able to blend three, supposedly three episodes into one. Para silang nag-blend ng kape, turned it into, uh, turned it into caramel macchiato, like that. Parang ganun. So, pag inom mo ng caramel macchiato eh seamless ang lasa. No lu- no lumps, no uh, no breaks in taste. Parang ganoon 'yan. Kaya sinabi kong malinis ang plot. You would never if you're a season anime fan, you would probably never even notice that this can actually be three episodes. Pero ginawa lang nilang isa. So, pace, flow, and plot yep they all came together for this episode yeah well another great episode from this anime right? talagang talagang matatawa ka sa mga sexual harassment moves ni ni ano eh, ni, ni Alice aside from that there are life lessons to be learned and for this episode pinakita ng episode na to ang family friendly tone ng anime na to that's important. It's an it's, a, it's an episode you can invite all members of the family in. Walang suggestiveness actually na nangyari sa episode na to. So you can It's an episode you can you can even have your kids watch. Yeah, parang ganun yan. So, The Duke of Death and His Maid episode 5. Isip pa, ganda ang episode eh. Oh. Two thumbs up. Excuse me. Judging from what happened in the three gear shifts and what has teasered for the next episode, I think the Duke is going to accept their offer. Na puntahan yung witch's sabat. Although he's not a witch, pero <laughs> biktima siya ng sumpae. Eh. So, this is a golden opportunity for him to actually break the curse and end all of this and, uh, and be with Alice for the rest of his life. As in, yung uh, mahahawakan niya, mahahalikan niya, yung talagang bonding, talagang todo bonding. Yeah. The Duke's a kind man. Bottom line, the Duke does not deserve this kind of a curse. I don't know what triggered that witch to, to place this curse on him and Siguro may atraso ang ang nani ng duk sa kanya at siya ang at siya napagbalingan. Why didn't this witch place that same curse on on his mother? Baka nani niya may atraso dito eh. And he's just he, he just got turned into collateral damage. That's that's the way I see it here. Mukhang may atraso ang nanay ng duke sa witch na na nagsumpa sa kanya may atraso yun malaking atraso siguro to matindi siguro ang galit nito sa pamilya niya baka mismo sa nanay niya may galit ito pero siya ang nilagyan hindi yung nanay niya ganong katindi ang galit nun that's the way I see it folks that's the way I see it mga ka-lifestyle Come on, the Duke's a nice. The Duke is a nice guy. He's probably yeah. He's one of the nicest lead characters right now. This, this, uh, this anime season. He's one of the nicest. And you can, you can instantly conclude that he does not deserve this curse, much less any curse. He doesn't deserve it. Zane and Kraft inviting him to the witch's sabbat. 
that's a golden opportunity for him to actually break it. At gusto pa nga sumama ni Alice eh. She wants to be there when she probably wants to see um, the Duke's happy face again when this curse is completely broken. Siyempre, baka, tum- baka tumalong pa nga sa tuwa yun eh. And we're nearing the the end of the first half of this anime's run. Mga kalayas lang. Kasi episode 5 na. Next week, it's episode 6. The Duke of Death and His Maid is a 12-episode run. So, malapit na tayong matapos sa first half ng anime na to. What is going to happen in the next episode? I really want to know. <laughs> so again, The Duke of Death and His Maid, episode 5. Do thumbs up. the next episode has been teasered mm. mukhang medyo uh, mukhang medyo relevant na sa nangyari sa episode na to so pero I don't wanna keep my hopes up I don't know about you mga kalifestad ako I'm going to wait for next week and watch that episode para malaman natin kung ano mangyayari dun in the meantime enjoy the other reviews in this digest mga kalifestad